Everyone, thank you so much for jumping in and joining us for a late lunch live stream. <clears throat> um, I was just starting to test the Sandman Rampage deck um, until she started streaming. Perfect, perfect timing. Uh, thank you guys for jumping in and joining us. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Uh, Jappy, thank you so much. Um, hey, it's Joe Bob. Definitely a late lunch. Uh, Living Stereo, uh, Jashito Brown, uh, Pizza Crew, uh, Aaron, and Kino. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, so, so far, I don't know if you guys have seen and hey, then Maverick. Welcome. It took Thank you, you so enough. much for the, uh, for the prime sub. It's very much appreciated. I hope that, uh, I, I appreciate, I'm glad to have you here. And then uh, Melanin, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. So I don't know if you guys have seen, uh, much stature gameplay, but in a value style build, it has been, uh, really, really crazy. It's been really consistent for me. Um, and so I, I think... If more people had access to her, I think it would be a lot more prevalent uh, than what than what it's going to be for a little bit. And then Blueberry's cat did the stream just start? It did. Uh, and then Pizza Crew. Yep. So I actually spoke with uh, with Kraken a little bit before. Wow, that was a very lucky swarm discard that it actually still hit our our swarms um, since they're both four cost. So it is uh, Kraken's deck. It's I, truly, I think the credit goes to Freddy Babes because a lot of it is his core. Um, so it's his core before Stature came out. It had Shang-Chi and Maximus in it. Um, and originally I didn't have Iron Fist or Vulture in mine. I, had, uh, I still had the Shang-Chi and the Maximus, but I think this one works just a little bit better. So this looks like a really standard um, like wave ramp deck because of the Ebony Maw. I don't think it's Galactus, but just in case, I'm going to pull their Ebony Maw over um, to the left with our... Pull oh, no, we don't have we don't have initiative. So if it is Galactus, then I guess we'll just lock them out. Uh, how'd you get the card so fast? I Right now, I have a complete collection. Um, and so it's just... Uh, a lot of a lot of credits, a lot of grinding, a lot of uh, like I've hit infinite each season since the since the open beta or since the closed beta. And so it's been uh, it's been a lot of grinding to get here, but um, also also a lot of money invested. So we can do Black Bolt to force them to discard one of their cards, but I don't know how impactful it's going to be for us. I almost want to do our swarms this turn just in case they run a Sandman because they do have the option to do Sandman this turn. So I think we run them into mid. Um, if I was confident in the Sandman, I would play it to the right into Machine World, but we're not. Um, so we're just going to throw it into mid. Uh, Axim, how's it going? Odin Odin coming down hot in mid? Uh, I would imagine. Uh, so that would be another 8, so that bumped them up to 20. But we can do Stature. Lucky, it was a really lucky top deck. Uh, we can do Stature. They don't... I mean, we could pop their Ebony Maw, right? I don't think we ever win the right lane. But I think this gives us the most power overall. Um, I think we win left and mid, depending on what they play here. I guess they could always arrow us over to the right, yeah? But then we're going to destroy their Ebony Maw. I think we would win this location and probably this one. So let's see. Let's see what they end up going with. It's probably the Odin. Oh, it's a Magneto. Okay. <clears throat> so the Magneto is a little bit stronger than, than the Odin would be. Not a great start for us. We're down four cubes. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much for the follow. Um, Metzer, Bolding, Steve Racer. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. But yeah, so far, stature, that's not a really, that's not a great showcasing. Otherwise, so far, stature has been really, really consistent, really strong. Um, it's just that value. You can stack it into a general good value deck um, and get a lot of return from her. Jacito, you said praying to, to Brode that your Moon Knight does not hit stature this stream. <laughs> it has hit it a couple of times. Um, but Moon Knight is more of a... Uh, it's a very specific... I, I don't drop Moon Knight every, every game. Um, it's very dependent on what the opponent's running and what I have in my hand. Um, but sometimes we we just hope that it hits uh, that it hits swarm instead. 
So I do think we're going to skip here. Do you stream, stream more on YouTube or here? Uh, Purple, in the past or historically, it's been more on, on YouTube. But I want to start I want to start streaming on Twitch. Um, so the reason for that is right now, um, like I released a video. I'm going to be releasing another video uh, here in like maybe two or three hours. And if I do a stream in the middle, then it disrupts and not everyone gets the, the notifications like they should. And so I, I think it's a little bit more. It's e a little bit easier for me to stream on Twitch. But at the same time, Twitch rewards longer streams rather than like the lunch live streams. So I, I don't know. Um, it's something that I'm just kind of testing out um, to see how it goes. I know I said we wouldn't use Moon Knight, but I think we're going to. We're going to play Moon Knight into uh, Murder World. It'll get, it'll get pushed over to the left. Uh, we're just hoping that it dodges stature. We got their Sauron, which is decent. And then the Mystique value, which we didn't have any use for. Uh, so that's big. So they're running Sauron and Electro. Oh, no, they had to get Sauron for from the camp, right? And then Fruit, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, Skyflyer as well, thank you so much. So we have we have both Miles and Stature here, but Stature stays at one cost for the rest of the game. So I think we prioritize dropping Miles Morales. We can we can do Killmonger, but that's gonna kill our Iron Fist. Next turn, we're very likely to do our Black Bolt. I think we almost just play our Swarm. We'll go ahead and play Killmonger. I don't think we're going to get use out of our Swarm here. Um, but it would be the same power over actually to be a little bit more power um, had we not dropped our Killmonger. But I think the play was probably the probably the Swarm there. We can do Black Bolt again. We know that it's not going to hit their Electro. We can hope that it hits something decent on their end. Uh, we can do three, four, five, six on the last turn. We can do Polaris, Swarm, and Stature all together. Depending on where they push their power. The claw is a sneaky amount of value that it adds. Um, in ramp in ramp decks, I've I've really liked the claw component. If you can get him out on the board um, on turn four, maybe even sometimes on turn five, you can make it really awkward for the opponent to be able to find a way to, to win. Uh, American Primate, thank you so much for uh, jumping in and joining us. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And then Man Bear, thank you so much for the follow. I made it to infinite last season, but this season has been a struggle. Um, I think usually as the season gets later and later, um, I find that it gets a little bit easier to climb. And then Rye Guy, how's it going? It's been a while since, uh, since I've seen you in one of the, in one of the streams or the chats. I hope it's, I hope it's been going well for you. I think we're going to split our power. Um, actually, this would not beat a Dr. Doom. It would overcome if they don't push any more power in the, into the left. But I almost think maybe we do this instead. Or do we need that much power into the right? We could always do just our stature. That I guess stature and lizard would need to be it. I think we're gonna I think we're gonna push this. If they go Doctor Doom, this covers us. And I think that's one of their better value returns is the uh, is the Doctor Doom. They could have an arrow and that disrupts us quite a bit, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna hope they don't. Uh, how long have you been on? T oh, it is the arrow. We lost the we lost the double four cube match against Shy. We need to we need to give it a second. We'll match against somebody else. The ramp is just uh, apparently too strong for us. Uh, how long have you been on Twitch? This session only about ten minutes. Um, in general, I've bounced a, I've bounced back and forth a little bit. Um, I primarily stream on YouTube. Most of my stuff goes on YouTube, but I found that it it interferes with how well the videos can do. Um, whenever whenever I launch a stream over there, because then it's going to promote the stream versus the videos. And so I would like to be able to do Twitch a little bit more. It's going to be a lot smaller streams for a while, um, and I, I I know that going into it. So on YouTube, we usually get about anywhere from three to 600 concurrent viewers here. I think it's going to be anywhere from like 40 to, to 80. Um, but um, this is only like the second Twitch stream I've done. Um, I think, yeah. yeah. OK, Dad. Yeah, we're on we're on Twitch for now. Uh, hopefully we can hopefully we can. Get a little bit of traction, bring over some of our our YouTube viewership over to the Twitch channel. Um, but Rai Guy, 
you said not gonna lie, I came down with the oh uh, with uh, the big C, and you're currently getting treated for it. Trying to keep your head up. Um, hopefully you get better soon. Um, I know that it's tough. I I caught it. Uh, oh, the big C, big big C. You're gonna you're gonna push through it, uh, Rye guy. The, all the all that positivity, it's not gonna go to waste. Uh, you'll be able to you're, you'll be able to pull through. I have no doubt. Then Herman Bloom, you said uh, found some su success today with uh, Hawk and Dino. I will not I will not give up on Hawk. I should narrow that down though. I went up two levels rather than falling four or five. Um, I think Hawk is still incredibly viable. I don't think the one power difference that it that it loses. Um, with the with the change, I don't think that's gonna impact it. Um, I don't think it's gonna impact it all that much. So we're gonna use uh, Vulture. It's gonna push over into the left. We have Killmonger to clear out their Sunspot. Um, we don't want to play into Vibranium Mines too early because we don't want to shuffle too many uh, in, too many Vibraniums into our deck. But right guy, definitely keep your head up. Um, I if you if you need anything from my end, I, I'm I don't know how much I'd be able to help. But anything I can do to help, absolutely. Boosty, hey, how's it going? And then, then Char, you said I want stature just so I can finally use Black Bolt. Yeah, it feels good to be able to finally use Black Bolt because he's so he's such an awkward play. Otherwise, um, dropping your turn five play for discarding their lowest cost card is usually not that impactful. Um, but it does feel good to finally be able to have some, at least some use from him. And then Manor Boy, uh, this is. is this is Zeolot, your, your biggest fan. Thank you so much for jumping over and joining us. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can regain some of these cubes that we have uh, that we have spewed early on here. So they have the Shuri, which is not great for us. Um, if we can get Arrow, that might help us displace their last turn play. Uh, but otherwise, I think we're in a really tricky spot. We're going to use Moon Knight, see what it discards. That's one of our only, like, Prage... Is, is is if we can hit their Taskmaster, uh, that we hit their Shang-Chi, which is unfortunate. Isn't it better to play into Muir Island ASAP to get the most out of the location? Uh, it is. It is if you... In general, it is, uh, Kidween. So, depending on where they were going to play their double-powered card is why I didn't, like, flood that location. <laughs> Stature, but I hardly know her. Um, Is there a way to overcome this? We can do seven. It's going to be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That only brings us up to 30. So we're still going to be short uh, for even if they don't push anything else here. We're not going to make it a negative 12. We're going <laughs> to have to find a win. Um, I was doing fantastic just playing this deck casually all day. Um, and then we launch a stream and just get absolutely just taken for a ride. We'll find, we'll find some wins sooner or later, guys. Do you think uh, Shuri and Arrow need a balance? Arrow is, <clears throat> Arrow is so flexible. And so I think it depends on how you look at the impact of a card. So Shuri, she's really strong in, in the deck that she is good in. So like, I, she's a little bit more on the flexible side, but Arrow can slot into just about any kind of tempo deck or any kind of combination of cards and consistently give value so i think arrow does need some kind of balance uh shuri i think she will get one um just because her interaction with red skull just is so strong but i just don't i don't know what they can do to give it a fair balance uh jason how's it going thank you for jumping in and joining us i think stature is ant-man's daughter uh who can increase and in de in decrease in size yeah i saw the marvel snap post um where it said that um Stature was Ant-Man's daughter. I, I I didn't know that beforehand. Maybe have her give a 50% boost instead of double. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know how you fix it without just like breaking the card. I'm I'm good. Uh, we're doing good. We have we have the video ready for whenever we want, want to release it tonight. Um, and so I figured I'd jump into a stream and stream for a little bit. And um I, th I thought we'd collect quite a few cubes. We went from 103 to 106, uh, just kind of casually playing this deck and testing it out. And then all of a sudden we're <laughs> all of a sudden we're losing. So we can do 
We could do Moon Knight, but we have a couple of targets we don't necessarily want it to hit. I like Polaris to be able to pull their Sunspot or their armor over. Um, that way it's susceptible to us. But at the same time, a one cost stature is good. We do have Black Bolt, so we're going to go with the safe play. We're going to go Polaris. Um, I'm hungry 24-7. Hey, what's up? How does stature look? Um, she seems, for me, she seems really strong. Um, but we are negative nine cubes starting off. We're 0-3 for, for our matches. So, <laughs> I mean, so take it with a grain of salt for sure. Um, but I think she feels pretty good. I just keep leaning into that Moon Knight. We could hit... We could hit their sunspot with a killmonger potentially if we draw into it. Oh, we do have arrow at least right now to pull their cards on the last turn, and they run a shuri deck. So arrow could be really useful for us against the shuri, uh, against their shuri, and then whatever they play on the last turn. Ah, oh, we're gonna stick it out. I mean, in the comics, Ultron is Ant Man's kid too. Is he really? I haven't read. I haven't read. Ooh, we hit. Do hit their Taskmaster. Unfortunately, we get our arrow. So we're not going to be able to pull their card, but they're not going to be able to copy this double power uh, beast that they end up throwing down. So do we do we go Black Bolt here? Depending on where they play, we could do a Stature and a Killmonger. I think we do. If they have an arrow um, that's really disruptive, that's going to be hard to overcome. But we know that they can't Taskmaster their, their play. If they have the Arnold Zola, maybe they get value that way. Uh, Shade, Moon Knight has come off as a dead card for me a lot, uh, because I always end up not wanting to discard anything. Recently started running Ghost Rider with it. Ghost Rider wouldn't be dec or wouldn't be t terrible. Um, does it ever feel clunky doing the Ghost Rider? So if you end up discarding a like a low power card, then you're just kind of stuck with a, a four three, right? And it might it might not end up being that way. Wait, is stature permanent discounted? Uh, yeah. So as soon as they discard a card. Um, she's one cost for the rest of the game. So something like cloning vats can give her insane value. You can play her for one cost every single turn as long as she's coming back into your hand. So we have the Killmonger to take out this one. They can't do Arnim Zola. They could do an arrow, though. Isn't that what they got us with last time was the arrow? <clears throat> but even if they arrow us into the far right, um, we destroy their sunspot unless they play more than one card, of course. We destroy their sunspot. I can post a, a pic of the list in Discord. Yeah, that I I'm still I'm still des definitely testing out different ways to build it. And so yeah, that'd be perfect. Oh wait, we can't play stature. We can't sit we can't play stature into Hellfire Club. So I think we play her to the into Mojo World. And we play the other two into Hellfire Club. Just in case they play a card into Mojo World. They beat us with Arrow. Typically they're going to run maybe like Titania and some other small cards. Or they could do Typhoid Mary. They could do maybe a She-Hulk. Actually, we don't overcome the She-Hulk power, do we? We're going to lock it in. We're going to potentially go down another four. So they do play into mid. They play Shang-Chi. We take out... Their, uh, their Sunspot in mid, so we should overcome their power there. Um, they're not going to be 100 ahead because we're going to take out the Sunspot. We'll have the same number of cards. <sighs> we needed that win. <laughs> we needed a win. Our confidence was, confidence was shaken. Uh, we definitely needed to be able to grab one, uh, grab a decent cube gain one at that. You lose it with, if it was Arrow? Would we? Because we, we, we had the power lead um, between the if it was two cards set here, we'd have the power advantage. If they pulled us over, it would have to be, they would have to play arrow plus another card in mid. But our stature would have went over to the right. So we would have had 14 to their seven. I think we would have beaten the arrow unless they had arrow plus maybe a Titania that went off. I guess we had Killmonger, right? We had Killmonger and they had initiative. So I think even that we would have won. But the card mid would have had to be, in, be a one cost. And so our Killmonger triggered after that, right? They had initiative going into that turn, I think. What do you think of the Domino Mask look? The Domino Mask. On, on Stature? Or 
or on or on domino i'm not sure i understand the question mystic uh the black mask around the eyes that stature has uh think oh it does it does kind of look like the incredibles masks doesn't it i didn't i didn't think about it i, I guess i haven't really like pulled up the card and looked at it real close uh but it does look like just the incredibles mask that just kind of like sticks on All according to the plan. Jashido. Sometimes sometimes it just works out how we need it to. Oh yeah, Miss Marvel has that mask too. I think you'd suit one? I think I would do the uh I think I would do the Matt Murdock uh glasses before I would before I would do uh one of the masks. We can do Polaris here. Uh next turn we could do Iron Fist and Vulture to get some value there. Um we have Moon Knight if we want to go with a uh, a Hail Mary discard. But I think we give it a couple of chances to see if we draw into blue uh Black Bolt. What about the glasses eye patch look? I think we could do the gla I think we could do the the glasses eye patch. I want to play my negative deck, but uh, I have to let everyone get Electro Sandman out of their system. Yeah, we see. I haven't seen as much Electro Sandman as I thought I would. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely a decent combo, um, and I think I don't know that the change to Sandman was a straight buff across the board because he works in a couple of archetypes he didn't before. But he also doesn't work in a few archetypes that he did before. Um, so I think it's a kind of a, a give and take. I think it's a side grade instead of a, a buff or a nerf. It's just utilizing him differently. Uh, but I did expect to see a lot more Sandman than what we're seeing. Uh, Shade, you said you posted the <coughs> the three that you've put together. Okay, perfect. Um, I'll check them out. And uh, I'm still doing some testing. I, I think... I think Stature is going to be a lot more flexible than some of the other cards just because of the value she can provide. Um, just Sometimes you're just going to get some really good return value from her. So we get some st some strife between the Miles Morales and the Black Bolt. Uh, Black Bolt's going to guarantee that we can do Stature and an additional card, but then Miles is going to go back up to four. And we have the Killmonger, so we definitely want to keep that. And I think this is a bot, so we're going to snap on him. I think it's a bot anyways. I think Black Bolt should give us a decent power uh, on the board. The Killmonger is going to clear up a lot of their cards, uh, sp specifically the Demon. Then we can do Stature. And that might be the only two we drop. I think he isn't great uh, because he's a he's now a card you have to ramp to. I'd rather in ramp into a better card. Yeah, but if your if your deck is built around ramping anyways, um, I think it's I think it's okay. What did they discard with my? What did they discard with Calling Wing the Sentinel? And so we win this lane once the demon's cleared. We should pretty easily win this one. I think it comes down to splitting the difference. Oh, they discarded. Bishop? I know that they have discarded Bishop, but for some reason I thought the Sentinel was what they discarded. Oh, we forced them to... We discarded their, their Sentinel, right? With the Black Bolt? I don't know that there's anything that they can that they can do here. Uh, Devil Dino is only going to impact one lane. The, I mean, a Cosmo to stop the Killmonger would be, would be perfect, but I... Okay. I was gonna be so, I was gonna be so upset. But yeah, I, I think Sandman's okay. Um he's not in He's not incredible tempo, uh, but he's not terrible tempo either. I almost I almost miscalculated that. I forgot we were gonna lose Iron Fist in mid. So it came down to a to a tie differential instead of just being an outright win. But I think I think he's in a decent spot right now. Um, he's, he's not great value. You could definitely do a Devil Dino or a, a Black Panther or something else instead if you're ramping anyways. Uh, but I think it just gives you another decent ramp target. 
it's not one that I would play every single game. I don't know that I would always play out Sandman if I have him. It's one of those that certain matchups, he's going to be your priority drop. I don't know what I don't know what decks to play anymore. Uh, not much is working for you at the moment. What what all do you have, uh, Dad? We do have the Calling Wing and Swarm Value, so I think we flood some of those pretty early into Muir Island, um, just so that we get that additional power turn after turn. I'm playing Sandman and Ramp now. Uh, I play them on four if the opponent. Yeah, if they're running like Zoo Negative Surfer. Yep. Otherwise, you play one of the other one of the other power drops. Yeah, I think he's one that's he's good to have. Um, sometimes he's going to be useful. Sometimes you're just not going to play him. Mostly four and five cards I'm missing. You have all pull three. It, and it's not super fun, but have you tried Death Wave? Um, I, I guess now with Sandman running around, that might not be great. The arrow counter is not great anymore. I feel like the Sandman change hurt all uh, a lot of accessible lists. I don't think it necessarily hurt like the Shuri decks. Um, or Thanos so much, uh, because a lot of times they're going to be able to get the stones out early. Uh, oh, can I see your list? Uh, Booster, you weren't talking to me. Okay. So since we had two good targets in our swarm, I went ahead and uh, leaned into the uh, into the Moon Knight just in case, um, and we forced them to discard their Magneto, which is decent. We're not going to be able to win when win we're island. And, and then George, thank you so much, or Jorge, uh, thank you so much for the for the follow, by the way. We're not going to be able to win Muir Island. Uh, that's just too much. Ram, thank you so much as well for the for the follow. Oh, snap. And Shay Ed, thank you as well. Um, we don't have a great answer to their their stacked lane. I almost think maybe hey, we just Hey, welcome. It took you long enough. Hey, it's Joe Bob. Thank you so much for the prime sub. That is very much greatly appreciated. Um your support is is phenomenal. You guys are you guys are amazing. Uh, I appreciate the I appreciate the the Bezos the Bezos sub. I think we just play our Iron Fist here. Next turn we could do Black Bolt to move a card. Then if we top deck our Miles, uh, we'll be able to use it alongside maybe an Arrow on the last turn. The Dracula with the Dracula. Do we ever? Do we think they flood their cards here? We could always try and hold it to hit maybe their last card in hand. I think we're going to pull them over to the right. We can do Black Bolt and Stature on the last turn along with our Swarms, depending on how much they flood here. Um, if they only have maybe... Okay, so they're not playing this turn. Interesting. Guess they could have an arrow of their own, right? How much power do we think we need? Um, they typically will run like a Giganto. They skipped last turn, but they have Infinite on the board already. So maybe a She-Hulk and something else. Oh, snap. Thank you so much for the follow, Uck. Hey, welcome. And then Yield Swank, enough. thank you so much for subbing as a tier one. Uh, very, the support is very, very greatly appreciated. I think we're gonna stack it this way. Um, if they do a heavy push into Kunlun, uh, then I, I think we just lose. But I want to make sure that we can overcome the Oscorp power push. And they do play three cards here. We force them to discard their Thor. So it was one of two. If we force them, oh, the arrow will pull. It pulls our stature instead of our swarm. Oh, okay. I guess no matter what it pulled, it, we weren't going to be able to outpower that one. Well, we were almost back up to 50-50. We're going to go down just a little bit further. We'll go back to, down to negative. There's been a lot of high cube games today. Um, a lot of times people have been playing skittish. Not today. Today they're, today they're snapping pretty aggressively. And then uh, Vix, I know you were sharing your your list with Boosty, but Sunspot, Psylocke, Daredevil, Electro Shang-Chi, Hobgoblin. 
And so it leans much more on like an early or tempo value, right? And so Sandman is much more of a tech card depending on what you see. I think that could work pretty decently. It has the lockdown components from like an Electro uh, Professor X to lock, that, lock it down early. I think that run pretty decently. Have you had much? Have you had much luck with it? And then Jack, what do you think about Shadow King? He's very difficult to use. Um, I, I guess not difficult to use, but difficult to get value out of. Um, so when I was testing him, it's it felt like there was always a better card for the situation, whether it be a Valkyrie or a Shang-Chi or an Enchantress. Um, it always just seemed like there was something better suited to that situation than Shadow King himself. Um, so being such a low tempo card overall, it was hard to find a way to utilize him to win. It works pretty well, but then again, I'm not in a very high rank. I dance between 60 and 70. Sometimes those, sometimes those can be about the same as, um, at, as like rank infinite. I know on my alternate account, I'm, I'm around 70 that I start the season at and I just slowly climb with it. Um, but I play the same people that I play on my main. Yeah, yeah, the 60 to 70, especially around like the start of the season, can be a lot more a lot more difficult to, to climb in than some people give it credit for. And then Martin, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, I appreciate you being here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. So we have the Iron Fist, so we can push more power into kill. And if we end up losing it here, I almost think maybe we do a Killmonger and then an Iron Fist. If we win kill and then we just play our black bolt or arrow here to push it into mid if we lose this one we can do the same thing but mid to push it over into left hey you were thrilled to hit 40 today uh climbing is hard yeah especially if you don't have a lot of time to to dedicate to it it can be very it can be very difficult um so i i don't think i would hit infinite because it's such a kind of slow and tedious grind um sometimes you're sometimes it's a lot of like back and forth and just very gradual gradual gains um that yeah i i wouldn't i wouldn't be disappointed at 60 or 70 by any means and then cruel master he said hey tlsg i watch your videos every day glad to catch you live for once i'm glad you were able to to catch us live i know it's not very often i would like to stream more uh but a lot of times you know work different work things life things come up uh, but it is something that i want to stream or do as much as i possibly can we could pull their cards over with arrow, but I think they play them into Kunlun anyways. Um, I think we run our Black Bolt here, just in case we top deck into Stature. And then we can adjust from there. We already have the Kiln Lane locked down. I'd be surprised if I ever make it out of Platinum. I, I mean, I a lot of people get really focused on the, on the rank. Um, I think, and when I climb, or usually do the best, is when I'm not stressing about the, about the cubes or the rank itself. Um, and more so just like really getting a good feel for the game itself and just enjoying what I'm playing. Um, I think that's when that's when I and it may be that I don't climb as fast that way, but it feels more satisfying for, for whatever reason, um, because even if I only gain 10 cubes that way, if I'm enjoying it. Uh, wow, that was a heck of a turn. It's a very random deck that they have. They have the Killmonger, but they also have Sunspot, which is a strange combo to me. Uh, they have the the lizard, the scorpion, the electro. I have to assume they maybe have a Doctor Doom that can go wide here, uh, but it's not going to be enough to win them the left lane. That's just a that was just a tough rotation altogether. Uh, Zane, thank you so much for for the follow. I appreciate you being here. So we do go back up to a net neutral, and so now this is where the real this is where the real climb starts. And then Marth, true. Actually, I climbed the most continually when I was farming boosters uh, with my Iron Allfather Odin variant. Yeah, um, so if it's something that I'm... Like, if I'm actively trying to climb, I play either more aggressively or more reserved, and I, I feel like I don't... I feel like I don't play as efficiently uh, because I'm either afraid of losing the cubes or too set on, like, I need to make up what I lost. I'm going to snap on turn one or snap a little bit more aggressively without knowing exactly what they have. Uh, but playing it patiently and just kind of enjoying what you're what you're running, I think helps with that. So we got Calling Wing. So we could discard a Calling Wing from our hand. Um, it's not going to be great. If we get Swarm, we could play both of the Calling Wings on four to discard both sets of Swarms. 
Ooh, and then we get can't play as well. So we know that they have the Calling Wing because we got it from their Daily Bugle. So if we just kind of wait it out patiently, we know that we'll get stature value here. I think we're going to pull their collector into New York. We're going to take that, that movement piece off the table um, so that they can't move as many cards or they can't choose if they want to move it into New York on the last turn or not. I almost wonder if we use a morph. Sometimes the Hail Mary for morph is incredibly satisfying. We can do the Miles Morales. Maybe we run morph just in case it's something bad. Ooh, but it could also be Modoc, right? Oh no, the, the Lockjaw didn't come from them. But with the Collector, it could definitely be a discard deck. We're going to try it anyways. Billy Maguire, I'm at 96 now and only play a Lockjaw Thanos. I don't know if I'll be able to hit infinite uh, today. I even if you don't hit it today, Lockjaw, Lockjaw Thanos is incredibly strong. Um, so even if you don't hit it today, you have, I mean, you have plenty of time left in the season. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat too much about getting there immediately and just kind of uh, feeling out the meta and making sure that you're paying attention to uh, meta shifts. Uh, not having Thanos, Galactus, or Shuri makes grinding a bit a, a bit rough right now. It, it can, uh, especially the Shuri one. I feel like Thanos is a lot more counterable than uh, than Shuri. Same thing with Galactus. You can maneuver their cards. You can use a Cosmo to block it. Uh, but Shuri is just so hard to counter once they have that ideal hand um, that sometimes it's it feels a little bit too, too strong. Didn't you hit it last week? Yeah, yeah, I hit it last week. Um, actually, I think it was a couple of days ago. And so I didn't hit it incredibly quickly, um, especially with all the testing and different things that I was running. Um, it wasn't something that I hit right away. So they did flip into their Modoc, which is not great. We discarded our Calling Wing by using their Calling Wing. Ooh, and they got ours as well. <clears throat> what are the chances? Did they discard a Swarm? They didn't, right? They got some cards from Helicarrier, but they don't have... They do have their Apocalypse, but I don't think they have their Swarm. We're going to do Calling Wing and Lizard. That will let us have free swarms. We could use Arrow on the last turn, maybe, and maneuver our cards. But I think this is probably a retreat with their Morbius, with their Collector being as large as they are. I don't know that there is a way to overcome that much power. Uh, lots of Sandman today, uh, but I don't think it's a good matchup against Thanos deck. It can be, um, but I, I think... Killmonger is just a just stronger going into Thanos a lot of times than uh, than than the Sandman would be unless they can cheat it out early. The early Vulture would have been nice to be able to move over into New York and buff up, but this one's definitely a definitely a retreat. We have at most like twelve power to throw on the board, and even if they don't play anything, we're still gonna we're still gonna lose that one. We're gonna take away with the one cube loss, and I lied before. Our, our true climb starts today. We may switch over into like a Sandman ramp at some point uh, just to test that one out a, lot, a little bit further. A lot of people were concerned with the with the Thor in that in the deck that I posted yesterday. Um, but it doesn't feel I don't know. I could I could see the concern, but it doesn't feel as clunky as as what you might think. Uh, and then Wodar is uh, Moon Knight and Black Bolt the only ways to trigger stature that uh, Sokovia discarding a card or them discarding a card by themselves um, are the are the four ways we have right now. So sometimes you're just going to get secret Sokovia value uh, whenever it just discards a card and then you just have a, a surprise stature to play it, to play their way. But between both Black Bolt and Moon Knight, you typically have one of those options in most games and most scenarios. Um, so it's not as difficult to trigger as, as, what, I, as what you would think, um, especially with Black Bolt being a later gameplay. So they have the Daredevil. They could be going <clears throat> with some kind of lockdown list. I'm going to go ahead and move their Daredevil. Uh, if we pull into... Wolverine so it looks like a Galactus deck now and so right now we've limited them to only playing their Galactus into the Hellfire Club if that's the direction that they end up going and so I think we move our Vulture just in case they don't go the Galactus route um, or maybe we do a Hail Mary Moon Knight
We're going to do a Hail Mary Moon Knight. Maybe it hits their Galactus. Yeah, if they wave, they'll be able to Galactus next turn. In their hand, they have five cards. We get rid of our Nakia and oh, their Deathlock. Not what we wanted to see. So we've used our Polaris. The only thing that would save us would be a wave if we have initiative going into, turn, into the turn. And so they will be able to see what we play here. We could do both Arrow and Stature, but I don't think that matters. Um, we pull over into the left. Even if it's Professor X, we have initiative, so it'll pull before. When did you decide to invest and complete the rest of your collection? Um, so I, I've been trying to complete it for uh, for a little while, since since uh, maybe around the new year. And I haven't pulled a natural Series 5 card since I started climbing. Uh, or since I started putting or putting money into it. And so I've gotten very unlucky with the pulls. Maybe at some point that'll that'll like even out in the odds eventually. Um, but yeah, I, I around December, I wanted to try and get as many of the cards as possible. That way, when a new card is released, <clears throat> um, that way, when a card is released, I have the best chances of getting it right away on that reset um, as, as possible. So the Doc Ock pulls into our swarm, which is not great. We do have them outpowered there for now. And that's not great either. We could do three cards there. I think that's what we lock in. Uh, they don't... I don't think it's great. But they have to play at least two cards to be able to overcome us in two lanes. This will give us the current lead in all three. And so they'll have to position. Oh, Galactus on the right would only... Oh, you're right. Oh, Vic. That's what it is. Galactus to the right. Oh, no. Their, their, uh, their Wolverine's going to win it for him. Yeah, yeah, it's going to continue to destroy until it wins it for him. I'm seeing a lot more... <laughs> Tough life. I'm seeing a lot more Galactus now than, uh, than what I have. I think people are starting to experiment with it again now that Null is a Series 4 and a little bit more attainable. Um, and with Nimrod coming out soon, I think Nimrod is going to make Galactus kind of frustrating. <laughs> um, but what cards are you missing? As of now, I'm collection complete. Um, before yesterday, I had Sentry that I still needed and then um, Stature. And with Sentry going down to Series 4, I was able to pull that from the Collector's Reserves and then I bought Stature. Uh, we're, out of, we're out of tokens, but uh, we are collection complete now. I'm so excited for Shuri, Nimrod, Galactus. Oh, uh, Shayad, that's it's gonna be so tough uh, to compete against. Uh, you're gonna have to. I think I think uh, Cosmo is like gonna be one of the only ways that we can make that. We can stop that. Uh, and then Kidween is Thor just like a, a safety net if you don't get Electro? Yeah. And so with without Electro, we need some kind of solid turn replay and so thor is that that alternate play path and it curves really well into not going with sandman so wong into like a black panther into mjolnir and then some other card uh gives you a lot of flexibility and so it's not one like set direct combo or play path uh there's a lot of ways that you can you can get there with that other electro deck <clears throat> so they play sunspot i think we go ahead and we're gonna push into Morag. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna snap on this one. Uh, we're gonna push into Morag. We have the Iron Fist. We'll move our Vulture over. Um, a arrow on the last turn could guarantee that we win that location. We have a potential Killmonger to kill their Sunspot at some point. I'm in a group chat in Discord with Willow, uh, the Galactus God, and we're counting day down the days for Nimrod. Yeah, even a turn six uh, Galactus is gonna be crazy and viable now. And so I'm sure that counters will come up or pop up from it, but, but it's going to be really, I think it's going to be polarizing until we figure out like how to play against it. So we have the Black Bolt to guarantee that we get the cheap stature um, on the last turn. I almost think we play Polaris into mid. 
Uh, and then... Uh, Inscape, thank you so much for the follow. And then... Bomb, I'm not sure if... Bomb and Zane and Marth. I'm not sure if I called yours out either. But thank you guys so much for the follows. Gambit, Gambit, Hail Mary, turn five. From what on the on their end? I guess we could wave into Black Bolt um, to make sure that they can't play multiple cards. But I think we're gonna play our Polaris. Okay, thanks, no problem. I'm I'm glad to have you here, Marth. Oh, for Nimrod. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Gambit Hail Mary on turn 5 might be able to do it. So I do think we still go with our Black Bolt. We don't have our Killmonger. We're going to have the Cheap Stature. We do have Arrow. So depending on what they play, we might be able to position an Arrow and a Stature, or a Stature and an Arrow. And they snap back, so it's going to be for at least four cubes. I do want to see what else they what else they play. And then SV, thank you so much for the follow as well. I tried to move a Sandman today with Magneto, forgetting that he costs five now. Oh no, uh, Billy Maguire, that's that's rough. That is definitely rough. So they did She-Hulk into Taskmaster. Do they ever do? Do they ever try to do an Arnold Zola? And if so, doing it in mid wouldn't be great for him. I'm wondering just where we position our arrow. They have initiative though, so they could they could they could out arrow our, our arrow. I think we lose to an arrow tech. This is a zero, probably a Shuri ramp or Shuri kind of point slam. We're gonna lose to the arrow. Ugh. Well, we're already infinite. We're gonna send it. We're gonna go super negative, and then we'll we'll test out some Sandman. This was doing so much better until I decided, hey, I'm going to launch a stream for a little bit. But we lose to an arrow play. We potentially lose to an Arnold Zola. Um, if arrow pulls arrow, you're good. Oh, okay. I was very set on us having lost that one. Um, I think we still check out a, this is, <laughs> this is streamer RNG, uh, but the short end of the stick. Um, I mean, <laughs> but the short end for every streamer that gets really lucky with their games, uh, somebody has to have a bad game. And so I'm glad to get those taken out for, for a little bit. So I have a couple of electro ramps that I tried. This one is more of a kind of tempo style. Um, not so much on, it's much more on like the ramp component and sneaking out your cards early. So it almost triples down on being able to ramp. Uh, thank you so much for the follow, Tiva. So it has the Electro, Wave, and Psylocke, as well as the Chavez for consistency. And so you should always be able to have a turn, a five cost drop on turn five, at, or on turn four at the, at the latest. But it just, I, I'm scared hanging out the, the one cost cards um, for part of my, part of my tempo because if there's a killmonger that becomes really scary but um that one's worked decently for me i like i like this one the high roll potential is really really big um i know a lot of people were kind of a little bit back and forth and uh not entirely sold on it but i've had i've had decent luck with with this version and um the kind of the flexibility of how and where you want to play it We're gonna we're gonna reset our count. That's the key. We're gonna reset our count so it's so it's deck specific. We're not we're not uh we're not four and six anymore. We're zero and zero. And so this one right now looks like Wong into maybe Black Panther into either an Arnim Zola or a Doctor Doom. <clears throat> and they did run a Psylocke, so they could be going Galactus. This one does struggle against Galactus play lines. Since we don't need to play more than one card per turn anyways, I think we're going to Electro into Warrior Falls. If it gets destroyed eventually, that's fine. Um, ooh, so the Psylocke into Electro. So before, you would see Electro and you would know for sure that it's Galactus. But with Sandman and Sandman ramps, ramps becoming more prevalent, you never know for sure. 
since we do have the ramp, I think we're going to go the Devil Dino instead of Black Panther. Or, in, or instead of Wong, either. We can always set up a Doctor Doom into an Odin play. But if they're going Galactus, then I don't think there's any helping us. If they're going with kind of a mirror match and they have Sandman, Sandman's not going to be great value for us. So I don't think we end up playing that. We'll see. We'll see what they end up. Okay, so they do have the Black Panther. They are going with like more standard uh, ramp instead of a Galactus play line. Uh, Requiem Gamora is awesome. 1200 gold worth every bit. Um... That's that's not this one, right? Uh, which one is the Requiem? I'll have to take a look at it. So if they do... They have the Electro, so they have extra energy. If they do Odin or Arnold Zola into an Odin, I don't think we beat that. Oh, this is the one? I pulled it from... I, I guess I pulled it from a mystery variant um, or a, a season pass maybe before they would made that change. So they do use the Odin. Um, but now... Hmm, this isn't fantastic for us either. We could do the Odin to re-trigger Doctor Doom. But no matter what, we lose in Savage Land. So if they do a big card in Warrior's Fall that's above, 12, that's above 5, um, then we lose that lane. I think if we had a chance, we would have to go with something like Gamora. And I think even that is kind of slim. But we're going to lock it in just in case. She slayed Thanos in the com in the comics. The Requiem one. Does Ooh, we do outpower just the Devil Dino. So just barely are we able to squeak that one out. But we start off the first <laughs> the first time we're a positive win rate. We're above a 50 win rate. We just had to switch decks. Gamora goes evil and starts killing everyone. Uh, comic is called Requiem. I I have the, the Marvel comic service. I just need to read a few more. Um, so I started with some of like the staples or the older, like the classics. And so I'm definitely still exploring some of those options. <clears throat> yeah, 512 Gamora is... It, and I like her in this list because if you use her in a Wong lane... She gets even more value if you use her and then hit her with an Arnold Zola. She can trigger in those other lanes and become, um, what is it, like 18 power? 17 power? She can be, become 17 power in those other lanes if it's the Wong lane. Uh, she, there's a lot of flexibility that she adds if we don't have our Black Panther, but we have Arnold Zola or maybe the Odin. Um, I think she really synergizes with that, that late end. Hey, uh, welcome. Play. It took you long enough. Uh, Rue Miles, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Um, I'm so glad to have you here. Uh, and thank you so much for the support. So they played a Koye. Um, typically, that's going to be like a zoo or maybe a discard style deck. The collector tells me it's probably the, probably a, it could be a Devil Dino deck, but most likely it's going to be a, like a discard deck. So we have the Wong into Black Panther. Um, Wong, we could do Black Panther. If we pull into Arnold Zola, then that's going to pretty much win it for us. Because uh, I don't think they're going to have a way to maneuver our cards. Uh, <laughs> damn, no one or two drop. Yeah, so with this list, it's very uh, heavy-handed. It's very high-end. So you typically won't, you won't run anything turns one or two. And you're looking to get information on what the opponent's running. That way you can position your cards a little bit more efficiently. And position that power push where you where you need it to or where you want to. So they had the Sword Master. They discarded Moon Girl. I think I think we have a the Black Panther is going to be big here. Doctor Doom would send ten power here, but I'm not sure that that's enough. If we don't draw into Arnim Zola, this might become kind of difficult to win, depending on how much power they push, how much power they play. So the Modok. Okay, so they have the two swarms and then Wolverine on the board. That's it, just their two swarms. That's not terrible. But the double Doctor Doom's not going to win it over here. Would it ever potentially win this? It's two, four, six, eight. It's 15. Yeah. 
could be 15 power here, or we could go with a Hail Mary. We could go Jubilee. We have a one out of three shot of pulling into our arms. Oh, that, that'd be like the super risky path. That'd be the 33% chance win. Um, and then it has the potential to pull into the, into the, uh, use the Arnhem Zola on the Jubilee, but it would trigger twice. I think we risk it for the Devil Dino. Because they're going to have probably a Chavez and then their Swarms. Hmm. I don't feel, I don't feel good about this one. Ooh, so they play it all into mid. That's great for us. Okay, so the Chavez and the two Swarms. I don't... Do we? I don't actually, no, we don't beat that, do we? Not quite going to beat it. We're, we're short by three. Had they split it up, uh, we would have been able to pull that one away. That's unfortunate. King in Black is a solid story, and it's recent. I'll add that one to the list. Um, I started with uh, with House of X, just like from the like much older, just to get kind of the, some of the classical stuff. Not classical, I guess not classical. Uh, just to get some of the like originals, um, the like the quality origins um kind of red and then i'm working my way into some of the other stuff yeah we i guess we should, probably should have went jubilee jubilee could have done it it's about null really and so null was a character that i didn't know much about i've i found that i've learned a lot about the, the marvel cinematic universe from playing marvel snap because then i'll get interested in the character um, I'll be like, I don't recognize this character. I haven't seen them in anything. And then I'll start looking it up and realize that they were in this movie or this comic that I've already read um, just from back way back when. And it just their name didn't stick. Um, and so it adds like a different layer to my Marvel fandom. Uh, I've always kept up with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the comics, not as much, but I've definitely gotten much more into it since starting since I started playing the game. Uh, Noel is quite recent as a character. But he's so cool, he became really popular really fast. He's a really cool concept for a character. So they have the Zabu. If we can get... And then the White Queen. So they're going to copy our... I guess they have three chances. Uh, our Doctor Doom, our Odin, or our Arnim Zola. If we can draw into Sandman. Um, I think with their Zabu play, I think we get a lot of benefit there. We could always do Wong into Mystique into Doctor Doom. Weird play line, but we could do it. Nightwing, how's it going? Uh, you're doing Twitch today instead of YouTube. Yeah, so with so I have a video that I'm gonna launch on YouTube in uh, about an hour or two, and um, I just have to finish rendering it. It's edited. I just need to finish rendering it. And if I have a stream going and then do something on if I have a stream going and then like release a video sometimes it has too many notifications that it doesn't go out to everybody and so yeah I'm doing I'm doing twitch at least for now um I, I would like to do twitch more consistently it's going to be much smaller streams uh much smaller kind of fan bases or, or just viewership but I think in the long run I might it might be worth it we got very lucky I wasn't paying attention uh death spanked yeah we <laughs> we got very very lucky um that they moved our card for us wow i think the views will grow fast i with with twitch i think i think it angles and helps support more long streams so you can get a couple of raids you can uh yeah we're, <laughs> we're saved by the arrow of all cards uh you can get views from raids and just like the longer streams in general but uh, I think if I do it more consistently, I can definitely grow the viewer base and kind of transition some from YouTube over here. So we can do the the Mjolnir and Doctor Doom. That's going to feel it's going to help us win here. I don't know that it, it doesn't help us win here is my concern. Would it ever be would it ever be better to do something different? I don't know that it... would be. Mjolnir to the right? Doom to the left? Yeah, yeah, I guess the power in... I guess the power in that lane doesn't matter. And so that way we could win mid and far right. 
They might have a Doctor Doom of their own, though. Oh, they they stole our Doctor Doom. They're going to beat us. I think I think the Arnhem Zolo into Thor. Nope. Okay, maybe not. Ooh, the power might come down to it since they played four cards. <laughs> um, but they did armor anyway, so uh, Arnhem Zolo in the right lane wouldn't have helped us anyways. We're going to lose by one power? Oh, that's rough. I mean, the, the play that I had set up wouldn't have won it in either way. Neither of those scenarios would have won it, but them playing that much power came as a surprise. <laughs> Billy Maguire, it's a fascinating story that kind of changed Venom and Eddie uh, since it was centered around them. Uh, Jason Aaron's Thor run is pretty good. Uh, too bad the God Butcher arc was high. Nothing like the movie. Okay. Um, a fish guy, thank you so much for the follow. Um, I'm glad to have you here. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So we can we need to start sneaking in some wins. Um, maybe we try your maybe we try your Daredevil Electro Lockdown list. That one sounds like it might be kind of fun. Uh, Zola, Thor, and then Double Hammer wins. Um, no, they had armor. We couldn't have. We wouldn't have been able to move our Thor. Uh, Fish guy, hey everyone, this is my first stream. Love your content, TLSG. Fish guy, I'm so glad that you that you found us um, on Twitch of all places. Um, we're glad. We're glad to have you here. So they're playing either a Destroyer or a Spectrum style deck. So I think they get more benefit out of a Sandman than what we will. I think we're going to do Thor. We can do Wong into like the Mjolnir into a Black Panther to be able to push our power. I don't think this is going to be a Sandman game. Something tells me they're going to be running. Um, I think it's the, the Spectrum Destroyer like hybrid. Try and twitch again. Uh, the Kier. We are. <laughs> we are. I am a I'm a I'm a I'm a glutton for punishment. We are trying, we're trying Twitch again. I, I think I need to be a lot more consistent to be able to grow on Twitch. And with releasing sometimes two videos a day on YouTube, uh, doing a live stream always felt like it was sacrificing some of a video's performance. And so I, I don't know. I, I keep going back and forth. I would like to be able to do it on Twitch consistently. But to do that, I think we need to, to be able to, I think we need to stream more consistently. Uh, Fish guy, someone told me that TLSG means that lazy streamer guy. Is that correct? There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of origins for what TLSG means. Uh, no one knows the, no one knows the true story of, of where TLSG came from. So we destroyed their, their spectrum got discarded. Their Ant-Man's gone. Um, I think we just go maybe a devil dino to avoid any kind of lockdown. The moment I've subbed last time, you decided to resign from Twitch uh, and stream on YouTube again. So I'll be careful this time. I'm so sorry, the keyer. Uh, I I am going to be trying Twitch for at least the next few weeks. Uh, so do with that information what you will. Uh, I, I'm going to be trying to stream more consistently. I always want to do it during lunchtime. But yeah, sometimes it interferes with the videos. Lord, uh, Lord thank you so much for the follow. So we could do the Devil Dino mid. I don't think we go with Wong. I don't think we have a need to. We could go with Sandman. Um, right now, actually, Sandman might give us a, a tempo lead. We could go Sandman if we draw Doctor Doom. That's perfect. Um, otherwise, I think we're okay. There's a lot, there's a lot of conflicting lore on what TLSG means. I, I prefer the, the SNP variant. Uh, Marth, which one is the SNP variant? Are you going to do a video on all the new bundles coming out so we don't have to do the maths? Uh, the math has been done a couple of different places. Um, I think the Deadpool one is the most value per gold. Uh, you get the tokens, you get the credits. Uh, Scottish, Na <laughs> Scottish National Party, SNP. So they play a claw. They can only play one card this turn. So I think we 
win. As long as we can swing the left lane. They don't have Spectrum. They could have Destroyer, but that's going to wreck their hand. I think we're okay. Maybe Gamora to the left. They don't have anything that can that can impact multiple lanes here. Oh, I mean those smaller ones that have been data mined uh, for March, like the gold for tokens. Actually, I haven't seen them. Wow, the onslaught I was not expecting. That could have been really, really bad. Nowhere in my mind did I think they were going to run an onslaught in a spectrum <laughs> in a spectrum ongoing list. Uh, no, no, you're you're okay. I think the the bundles. I think I think with spoilers. I used to try to completely avoid them, but they are so, they're covered so frequently um, that it's hard to avoid um, most spoilers. Um, but the the small data mine bundles, I haven't looked at, so I'll have to take a look at them. I'm confused because you don't say all, <laughs> all right in the stream. I don't. Uh, usually I'm, I'm talking to chat a little bit more. Um, but every once in a while I can I can give a I can give a haul right at the at the start of a game. But uh to answer Fish Guy, to answer your question, um there was there was a time where I was on a professional Call of Duty, a professional Call of Duty team. And um there was uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Modern Warfare 2. Um so Modern Warfare 2 was the one that I, I played uh very competitively. And there was a there was a perk that like nobody in competitive used, and it was uh, it was last stand. And I used to be so arrogant that um, I would intentionally let myself go into this last stand, so you only have a few seconds left to live, and then you, you die, and you can't help out your team anymore. I would intentionally let myself go into uh, last stand, and uh, just just to just to grief the other the other team, just to give them a hard time, and then you know end up clutching it somehow. Um, and so my team started calling me the the last stand griefer. And so that's I kind of shortened it. I decided to kind of wear it as a badge of honor. And, and that's where it that's where it stuck. Uh, Dust Cali, thank you so much for joining. I'm glad you were able to make the stream as well. So that's not the true origin. I I always try <laughs> I always try to make up some kind of weird story about um, about TLSG. <laughs> wholesome, wholesome image of TLSG now shattered. <laughs> so I always try to make up some kind of uh, randomness um, <clears throat> regarding what TLSG means. So, <laughs> so it actually means that live stream guy. Um, like eight years ago, I, I thought it would be funny to create a channel on on Twitch with the name that live stream guy. Uh, that way, if you found it and you were telling your friend, you were like, "Hey, have you seen that live stream guy?" and their response would be, "Which one?" Uh, I streamed for all of like two weeks, maybe a month, and during that time, chat shortened the name to TLSG for short, and it's just something that I stuck with from there. So much more wholesome uh, <laughs> this year. Don't don't unfollow just yet. Uh, much more wholesome of a of a true origin story. But I always like to try and make something up. Were you just as calm and chill when you played COD? Uh, probably no, no. I, I was pretty, I was pretty calm and chill. But there, there's a like a. There, I think there's a breaking point for everybody. Um, and I didn't play Call of Duty competitively. Uh, I played it, and I, it's just something that I, I played a lot with my friends. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the COD story is a lie. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I, um, I deceived you. I did play Call of Duty, just not competitively. Uh, Reefy, thank you so much for the follow. The last down, the last stand griefer sounds cool. Yeah, I always try and come up with something unique, and usually I'm really bad. <laughs> Wait, now I'm confused, bamboozled. Yeah, I'm not very good at at, at lying to. <laughs> I'm not very good at, at lying to uh, to the people that actually want to to watch the content, and so uh, it, I usually come up with something, but it's usually not very not very good. Um, and thank you so much for the follows. We have uh, The Luck and Lot Seeker. Thank you guys so much. Uh, where statue, the title lies. Ooh, okay, I can switch it. I can switch back. Um, we started running into a lot of Shuris, and we started getting just decimated. So I, I switched over to a different deck just to, uh, just to try something a little bit different out. <laughs> More origins than the Joker. I, I try. I have a hard time coming up with unique ways to kind of spin it every time. Uh, but the idea is that we have we have a lot of origins um, and like the true one is I mean, I always tell the truth at the end, but the, the true one, I, I think it's fun to have kind of an air of uncertainty around it. 
We can do Dr. Doom. It spreads power to the left and right. Um, them being a Thanos deck, they probably have a lot of stones, or they could just lean into Thanos himself. And if so, then I think we're fine. I think that's the only way we overcome the left lane and impact the middle is our Dr. Doom playline. Nightwing, all good, but every time anyone br brings you up, uh, everyone I talk to always remembers you're your super calm and chill, and that's why people love your content. Yeah, I I mean, I win or lose, I, I think there's a lot to learn from any game. So even if the meta is like incredibly frustrating, um, I, I always try to find some way to kind of benefit from it. And so it, it's much more calm and relaxed than... Um, in some content uh the luck yeah i opened shuri with tokens today uh hoping to pull zero or red skull with four thousand credits he pulled neither i have eight cards left in pool three. Oh no the luck you'll get there soon hopefully you get there really really soon um shuri is a shuri is a good one i think you can even build her sometimes without without zero um just depending on how you're pushing it you can even do it without red skull it's just not as it doesn't have as high of a high roll uh, but it's definitely doable. I've seen your dog in the background a couple of times. Is it a golden retriever? Uh, so they are, I, have, I actually have three fish guy. Uh, they're they're great Pyrenees. And so they're really big, really lazy, uh, gentle puppies. So I have a daughter. Um, she's almost two. And she goes up and she she feeds them. She likes to, to feed them out of her hand. Um, she gives them big hugs. And they just, they they're very careful around her and so um they're really big dogs but really sweet dogs at the same time we'll do uh, luck we'll do we'll do a little bit more stature for you uh this list was running very very well for me off stream and then i jumped into stream and just got it started getting decimated so we'll, we'll see if now that we took a little bit of a break from it if going back to it does a little bit better uh hurt smith i tried these decks yesterday after watching your video uh, three out of the ten games I drew Electro, and th and two of the time, oh wow, two of those times he got Iceman. Uh, that's not great luck. Uh, <laughs> Hurt Smith, I'm very sorry to to hear about that. Um, but the good thing with that list is it's not so all in on Electro. A lot of times Electro is not like the the only winning playline. Uh, there's just a lot of flexibility in in how you can in how you can play that deck to gain that value. Um, and so Electro, not drawing him, as long as you draw maybe your Thor or your Jubilee, you should have a chance to swing it uh, in your favor. So we're going to play Calling Wing here, even though we have Iron Fist in our hand. Since we're not going to reveal it this turn, we have an additional turn to play our Iron Fist, um, depending on what we draw into. But it'll probably just end up being Iron Fist. Maybe we can do Iron Fist and Lizard, and it gives us that extra that extra energy that we can push, push out on the board. Uh, sorry, I didn't intend to post a link. Uh, let's see. Did I hear you mention you work with data? Uh, do you do stats and shenanigans for your for your playing, or you just trust Snap.Fan? I ha I've for a while I was just trusting Snap.Fan, but I've started having some some games that aren't logged correctly and just some issues between switching back and forth between accounts, and so I need to do something like in an Excel file um, to to track those. Um, you're you're okay. I Nightbot may be a little bit strict on. I need to put Snap.Fan as like a trusted link, but I have I don't have anything right now. But it is something that I want to uh, try Untapped. I do have Untapped. Um, I actually have a an affiliate link for it, but it doesn't keep my stats. Ooh, I need to play. Uh, but it's a but it does but it doesn't keep like the stats and um, that sort of information for me. I would rather have played the uh, the the lizard first and then Iron Fist. I got a little bit too distracted. <laughs> I got a little bit too distracted by uh, by chat. Uh, Bane, first time I caught your stream. I always watch uh, you in jogging. I, I like I like how you speak, man. Thank you so much, Bane, for being here. Uh, the live streams have definitely have a lot more ums and ahs. I, it's something that I'm trying to work on. But I am glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're enjoying the the content, and I hope that I can make your your jog a little bit. A little bit easier, a little bit more maybe relaxing. <clears throat> I used to run, I used to run an awful lot, um, and then I hurt my ankle and I got out of the practice. And then it's hard to get back into it once you, once you get out of the swing for a while. And so it's something I would like to build back up into eventually. But I also feel my like like I split my time a little bit too many different ways already. 
Uh, Sandman is very strong right now. I'm winning easily with Electro. The only thing it doesn't stop is Thanos, if they have a great hand. Yeah, and for me, it, it has a hard time with some Shuri decks. If they have that perfect curve of four into five into six, they typically don't want to do more than one card a turn anyways. Um, but yeah, we we get the we get the Killmonger value. I, I almost think we do a, maybe an... Oh, they play first, so an arrow this turn is not going to be great. I want to sneak the Killmonger in on them, though. Do you ever just play Stature? <laughs> Tens of sub TLSG. It, do, it does stand for something. Um, I don't have a... I usually try and come up with a fake origin story anytime someone asks, but I, I explained it a couple minutes ago. I don't have another fake one to use right now. Um, but the true meaning is the last stand griefer. Um, one of them was the, the, the lasagna and spaghetti guy. Um, one was the lonely sniper guy. Uh, the true one is that live stream guy. Wait, is that the real Bob Farm? Yeah, I play against Bob Farm quite quite a bit. Are they? Do they create content? Actually, I haven't seen them anywhere. Um, so if they create content, I'd, um, I I face them maybe every couple of days, um, depending on how actively they're playing. We get the Killmonger, we get the Moon Knight, maybe just flood this lane so they don't get their lizard value. If we can swing Baxter building, then I think we swing the game. Uh, do your kids express interest in card games? Not yet. Um, my... That's okay. We take out their Killmonger. I think it swings in our favor. Yeah, just barely, but it does. Um, they haven't. They haven't expressed interest in it yet, just yet. My daughter's a little bit, um, a little bit too young, I think. And so right now she's like, and I can see the analytical pieces kind of coming through. She likes puzzles and being able to figure out how things work. And so I think eventually she might. Uh, I'm Martini. Thank you so much for the follow. And then Lost Seeker. I don't think I called yours out. Um, and then the luck, I think I called yours out, but thank you guys so much for the, for the follows. So I can see the analytical pieces coming through. And then my son is, um, he is 10, almost 11, uh, but he's much more into like Roblox and creating his own servers and stuff. He doesn't, he thinks it's cool. He thinks it's cool that I have a YouTube, uh, but doesn't necessarily care for the, the content. <laughs> um, nice black bolt. I have had this black bolt for months uh, i think since before the global release and i finally have a have an excuse to to use him <clears throat> and so i'm very glad to be able to finally use the the black bolt variant i saved up and opened 18 boxes yesterday you're like 2500 collection level and pulled surfer shuri mysterio and black widow uh pulling shuri that early is that's pretty big and then Surfer is Surfer's decent now, even after the nerfs. If you have Brood, um, still pretty decent. Mysterio is good for kind of like a Flood style deck. Uh, Black Widow is very situational. I think she's probably my least used out of the three. We need some channel point redeemables. We do. Uh, I need to fully set up. If I'm committing to Twitch, I need to like fully commit to Twitch and and set everything up with it because it has a lot of really cool features that YouTube doesn't. Um, so like the point system, the, the hype trains and just all of, all of those like really cool things. Um, it has it, it, it has going for it. So we went against Brad earlier. I think we had a morph against him earlier because we were afraid of hitting his lockjaw, right? Maybe it was another discard deck. I think he's running discard. So I'm a little bit afraid of running morph, but if we maybe morph in, I don't know, we're going to run it. I always like to see the, the the random RNG to see what they have in their hand. No, I don't. That was a one out of five chance. Oh no. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I don't think YouTube has something like Prime Sub. They don't. Um, they have just the like the, the regular memberships, but not something that like. If you have like YouTube, uh, YouTube Premium or whatever their YouTube service is, uh, there's not a way to to get the extra. <sighs> that Modoc is so unfortunate. 
Um, they haven't snapped. They're very kind that they haven't snapped into it because we at least we have the swarms. But man, oh no, <laughs> this is what we call tempting fate. Yeah, somehow, somehow I knew that was going to happen. I, I, I think it was deserved. I do think it was probably deserved. We can pull their Polaris. <clears throat> we know they have Modok that they're going to play this turn. We could pull their Polaris over or their collector over this way with our Polaris. But this is going to be too much to overcome. Their swarm army, I think, would be too much to overcome. I mean, we would put both of their cards over into the left lane. Eight power middle is decent, especially with uh, like us having three swarms versus his two. But it could be a five power. Could be a five power one. So Nakia hit their Morbius and then one other card. I don't think it's worth it to stay here. Okay, we'll go ahead and pull it. How big can Collector get in discard decks? It depends on how high their high roll is. Uh, so Modok can usually get them pretty large. <coughs> but I think he, it's a little... You have to have to play it early. So if you draw it on the last turn, it's really tough. Um, Pelt, you said incoming raid? The mo uh, the Wolverine. The Wolverine difference is pretty big there. Um, they only have two cards now. So was, was one uh, Apocalypse? Did they not have the Swarm? Yeah, I got Shuri, but don't have Taskmaster or Red Skull or Mary. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, without without that, that might be that might be that might be tough. But we do get the stature. Oh, snap. Hey, Mogwai, thank you so much for the uh for the raid. That is huge. Um I watch your content uh quite a bit. I think I thank you for the raid. That's huge. Um uh, I hope you had a great stream. Thank you so much for for sending them them our way uh exequent I, I definitely know i <laughs> i definitely know who he is um legend the root i watched some of your stuff before you switched over to uh before you switched over to snap so i'm glad that you're you're back in action and uh, i i appreciate the support man so many subs coming through thank you guys thank you guys for being here gwent is dead satch i actually never played gwent um i actually hadn't heard of it before i pl started playing snap and creating content around it I don't, I got distracted. I don't, I don't think, oh no. I don't think that that even, I don't think the Swarm's mid would even win it for us. My gosh, Prince of Peril, thank you so much for the Prime sub and for all of the follows coming through. I may need to, <laughs> I may need to turn the follow alert off. That one's not it. No, yeah, that one's it. Thank you guys so much for the follows. I'm going to wait just a minute uh, <laughs> for those to finish coming through. You guys are so, you guys are amazing. Uh, I'm sure you don't want to hear, oh snap. Uh, that <laughs> that many times that consecutively uh, what does stature do so stature is kind of like a miles morales card where if the opponent has discarded a card that game she only costs one um and so it, she is a little bit more in my opinion a little bit more flexible than miles morales um because her her discount carries over so not only does it stay for um that one turn like miles it, it stays for the rest of the game and so you can use her a little bit more strategically or consistently on the last turn with like um, on the last turn with like an, an arrow. Uh, keep the alert. People love it. I think I I, <laughs> I think it's good in in short moderations. Scary Yokai. I watch your content on YouTube. Thank you so much for the follow here. I haven't been streaming on Twitch very long. Most of my streaming was on YouTube, but I'm wanting to switch over and break into the into the Twitch uh, stream. That way I can focus YouTube for the video content and here. Yeah, we're going to turn it off. That's going <laughs> to we're going to turn it off for a bit. I can focus here on like the streams. I can launch like an impromptu late night stream if I need to and not have to worry about how it impacts the videos. Yeah, it costs one if if someone discarded. Are you full-time content creating now? I'm not. Not yet, Matt. Uh, not yet, Matt. I would like to. If should pull Binks and stream on both platforms. I I did that actually a little bit before Binks did. Um, and it my internet's not good enough. My internet's not good enough to be able to keep up with it. 
and so it, it it didn't it didn't work out. I would like to be able to do that, but unfortunately, it my my internet starts lagging, and so then both streams are poor quality. And so I I figured I'd rather focus on one rather than splitting it. Uh, Spessy does that, but he has British internet. Yeah, I have the best internet I can get for the area, uh, but that's that's not saying a lot. I almost want to wait one turn here. We have the Iron Fist that's going to come down and push over into the Sanctum Sanctorum. The interaction between uh, Iron Fist, Vulture, and Bar Sinister is phenomenal. It fills it up with eight power Iron Fist in the middle. Okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna get it. Um, it fills it up in the middle. So our middle lane's not gonna be great here. I think we play Lizard to the right. We have the Black Bolt for the guaranteed discount of stature. Oh, actually, we need to play in Bar Sinister to get value into Sanctum Sanctorum. I don't like any of these options for pushing from Bar Sinister. With <laughs> with stature out, can Black Widow finally or Black Bolt finally be good? I don't know that good is the right term for him. I, he's okay. Um, I think it gives him some additional value, but it's I don't think he's like broken. Moon Knight, Moon Knight is funny. But at the same time, we're going to discard our hand. We'll do it. We'll, we'll do it. Hope that it misses stature. So, okay, the first the first trigger hits stature. So we're going to make them discard most of their hand. We're going to get four triggers of Moon Knight here. We have to hope for maybe like an arrow to pull out of Bar Sinister, a Killmonger to destroy their Sunspot. What happens if Iron Fist is filling up Bar Sinister? Uh, does he punch the same guy four times? I actually don't know. No, uh, I don't think it does because Iron Fist is after you play your next card. So it's not just the on reveal. He it would move it. It would move the next card if it had space. It would move him over four locations. But um, since since it's just the on reveal, it's not the actual effect. Um, it it wouldn't. So we have the Killmonger value. Do we do we skip a turn? They don't have many resources. Their sunspots growing with yeah with Kamartaj, He moves two times. Um, same thing is for some reason you play him into a Wong lane. Uh, he does the same thing. Any recommended replacements for Stature and Black Bolt? So, actually, yes. Um, in... I did a video on it, but it was created by Freddy Babes. It's a very it's a very value-heavy deck. Um, and so it wants to kind of combo some of those pieces for good value that's under Shang-Chi range. And so Black Bolt and Stature, I believe, were Shang-Chi and... They were Shang-Chi and Maximus. Um, would be the Freddy Babes version if you don't have Stature or Black Bolt. Um, and I think I think that one works phenomenally still. So we can do the Killmonger now. That clears up one space in Bar Sinister if we need to play one additional card. But I think we're okay. Maybe not. Gamora's big. I, we can't we can't outpower the Gamora. I think we just lose this to a good play in Bar Sinister. Thanks and why Moon Knight? Uh, so Moon Knight is another way for us to trigger. Oh, uh, what for Moon Knight? So Moon Knight's not in the original. Um, let me pull up the original list for you. We're gonna retreat out of this one, jump into a different game. We'll take the we'll take the one cube loss. We we didn't have the right setup for the bar sinister lane, and so it, it wasn't it wasn't gonna be worth it to risk it. Why did you add Moon Knight? I added Moon Knight for stature. So with stature, if your opponent has discarded a card, it's gonna make stature only cost one, and so we get value out of her that way. That's the same same thing with Black Bolt. That's the only reason Black Bolt's in here, um, to get to give that additional value for our stature. The original Freddy list. I'll start a game. Let's. I'll, I'll pull it up for you. I don't know what I had in it. I don't know what he had it in it. Uh, over the over the Moon Knight though, I know that he didn't have Moon Knight in it originally because there was there was no value in it. So in, he had a Cosmo. Um, he had a, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bomb. He had a Cosmo instead. That way you could block some of those really powerful owner reveals. Um, I, <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate the assist there. Uh, Fish Guy, TLC, are you trying to climb to Infinite 2? Or why even bother retreating? Um, I just, I think it, I'm already Infinite. 
Um, but I think retreating shows a different element of the game that's also really important, just as much as like the deck and the location that you play. I think knowing when to stay and when to retreat is, is just as important of a skill. And so I that usually doesn't come across very well in videos. Um, and so I think in live streams, I'm able to showcase it a little bit better about when it's not a good matchup, when when you're trying to conserve cubes, that sort of thing. Is is why I still is why I still uh, retreat. <laughs> Marvel Snap, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, Hot Teriyaki, uh, Matai's, everybody for the follows. I think we might be safe to turn the notification back on, so <laughs> so that. Oh man, well maybe not. Uh, but thank you guys for the support and for sticking around. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic day so far. So we don't have stature yet. I think we just, I think we play Moon Knight before Asgard triggers. I think we win Asgard. Anything that it discards here is okay. Obviously, Swarm would be better, or Brood would be just fine. Oh, snap. But <laughs> Marvel Snap. Uh, I'm glad that I'm glad that you're here. Hopefully, you're having a fantastic day so far. And then Mystic Moto. Any tips on getting collectors tokens? Uh, just pin Galactus, but I'm only halfway there. The only real way to speed that up is uh, is with money. Uh, <laughs> yes, is with is with uh, is with money or buying the bundles. So looking for a good value bundle is going to be a little bit better than just like spending it on gold. Uh, but other than that, it's just maximizing like your daily and weekly missions. And still, that's going to be kind of a slow drip. So they did get the the Asgard. We discarded their Groot and we discarded our Vulture. Uh, Jeff, holy moly. Thank you so much, uh, Jeff, for the raid. I hope you had a fantastic stream. Uh, <laughs> you had to one up, you had to one up Mogwai, huh? Oh my gosh, the, you guys, thank you so much for the support. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the notifications <laughs> now, uh, but I hope that you had a fantastic stream, man. Uh, I appreciate the raid and I appreciate the support. This is nuts. Oh man. I don't think on Twitch I've ever had, <laughs> I don't think I've ever had over like maybe 400 on Twitch. Um, so this is unreal. Uh, we better pick something to play, I guess. We'll go ahead and play Black Bolt to the left. I I think Arrow is going to be a better play for us here, but I'm a little <laughs> a little bit distracted. Uh, Crazy Eights, thank you so much for for being here. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And then uh, Save Bagels, hey man, hey man, finally caught a stream. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, dude's on fire for real, for real. Man, you guys, I, I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, hopefully you guys are having as fantastic of a day as you guys are making it for me. I guess you're calling into work. I, <laughs> I've actually bumped off a few work things uh, because there's there's no way that that you quit a stream with this much momentum. There's no way. Yeah, Kraken Knoll, how's it going? I know you were uh, packing up and moving. I hope that you're feeling a little bit better. Um, and then, yeah, the official Marvel Snap is here. Sweet back Black Bolt. Yeah, I'm... I've had it for months. I've just never been able to actually utilize him. Uh, hear from the Jeff raid. Finally, you're, finally, you are on Twitch. Yeah, and if we if we keep having this kind of traction, yeah, we'll absolutely stay on on Twitch. Um, I I think that it works better having that kind of division. And then KM Best, how's it going, man? Uh, I know that I've been in a few of your streams, but I I don't think I've caught you in one of mine for quite a while. At least not on Twitch. And so uh, I'm glad that you're here. Hopefully, you're having a great day. We're gonna go down a few cubes, uh, but that's okay. We could be negative. We could be negative cubes, and we'd still be uh, Mr. Positive right now. So fun, uh, fun, fun. Black Bolt flat fact: the person behind him in the art is is Blinky. In the in the Black Bolt that I have, that's not the right one. Uh, the one in the him? Haven't seen you on since release day. Yeah, not on Twitch anyways. Um, I wasn't able to dual stream. It just was too much for my internet. And so I, I had to uh, like focus on one or the other. Uh, I would like to focus on... I would like to focus on, on Twitch. I think that's going to be the best platform for, for streaming or for specifically streaming. I'm at, a <laughs> I'm at a rest stop somewhere in Alabama. 10 hours into your 18. Ooh, uh, that's uh, the 18 hour trip, especially when you're not feeling well, is uh, is tough. And actually, I didn't I didn't know much about Black Bolt until I started playing. So I'm reading some of the comics and kind of catching up, but I'm still really far behind. Um, hey, Marvel Snap, I just got Sauron. <laughs> Thank you. Now I need Shuri. 
Once you get Shuri, you're gonna I, Daft Junk. You're gonna be unstoppable. Blackagar Boltagon? KM Best, I feel like your Marvel knowledge or your lore knowledge is much, much more in depth than mine. I'm still trying to catch back up. Um, so I'm I'm still the same person that, <laughs> that mispronounced Agent Colson uh, as Agent Collusion and like non-ironically mispronounced it. And so I'm still trying to catch up, but it's it's gonna take me a while to get there. Unless the opponent has arrow. Sometimes in Sauron decks, you can flood enough low cost cards ahead of time um, that even arrow is not always able to, to win. And then if you have a couple of different play paths, um, it's, it's a little bit hard to guarantee your value there either. <laughs> Agent Collusion would be pretty dope though. I'm yeah, and that's how I read it. Like in my mind, that's that's exactly how I pronounced it. I got I got roasted on that video for it. Um KM, KM Best definitely learns all the mere the meme tier stuff. I could see that. I could see that from KM. A stature worth buying. I think it's going to be good in like a really value specific build. I don't think it like just completely derails anything. I don't think it's going to be well. That's 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 not great. I don't think it completely derails anything, but I think it does have solid value. <clears throat> um, not being showcased here today, but um, I do think it has very solid value in like uh, kind of a mid range style approach. There could be a greedier version, but I didn't have great consistency with it. Something where you double it down on like your Moon Girl and your Miles and maybe like a She-Hulk with uh, with Moon Girl so that you can really flood the board with some mid-range value on the last turn. I just wasn't able to get that one to trigger consistently. Like, yeah, um, KM Best, I agree. I think it's probably a buy at 3,000. Um, if you like that style of play, but I don't think it is just an absolute necessity for a card. <laughs> Ghost sucks. Do not buy. <laughs> uh, KM Best, did you see my did you see my video on Ghost? Uh, that was the most pain that was the most painful uh, deck spotlight that I ever did because I did it just consecutive games and I got obliterated. Uh, just it was my slow descent into madness. That is my like. If I ever just snap and go crazy, um, like that's going to be what they point to as like, yep, that was our that was our early warning signs. That was it. That's where we should have known. TLSG in chat. Y'all happen to know if we can use macros? I wanted to make one for uh, Fish Guy. I wouldn't. Um, I know that there is something like that out there, but I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't rely on um, that as like you know farming farming season pass. You're going to tank your MMR, so then when you're actually playing, it's going to be bots. It's going to be real bad. And I think it breaks uh, TOS. I'm not for sure on that, but I yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, is the ghost especially bad because of arrow prevalence? I, I think that's a piece of it. But also, a lot of times, if you're playing ghost, you could just play your cards a little bit more efficiently to make sure that you lose initiative. Um, like you can, you can play around having that priority, and, and ghost is kind of like a a red flag, like a warning sign to the opponent that you're running some kind of like late game counter or combo. Um, and so I, I think it gives them more information than you get benefit out of it. Yeah, it's a great, it's a card that sounds great, but yeah, once one in practice, it's, it's really tough to use. So we have the, the Thor matchup. We have the Killmonger in hand. We're going to be able to move our Vulture. So next turn we can do Killmonger and Miles. Um, if we draw into our Black Bolt, that's probably our ideal situation. We could also try to, instead of filling up the Raft, we could just push for um, trying to win Asgard instead. Yeah, you, you lose a lot of flexibility, and just information is the key in this game. So you're giving them more information than you're gaining. Um, and so that's why cards like White Queen have so much value, uh, because you're gaining information on them so you can play more efficiently. Uh, whereas with Ghost, now they can play more efficiently against you. So I think we do our Killmonger and our Miles. They're going to get the free Raft card, um, but we will get, we should get the Asgard win. 
to be able to do maybe a Black Bolt on five into a, an arrow and a stature on the last turn. I think it's probably our ideal play line here. Uh, did you pick up the Deadpool bundle? I did. Uh, for the token value, and but that's coming from a whale. Uh, so like, take it with a grain of salt. The uh, token per gold value that you're getting uh, is much more than if you were just refreshing your, your, your quests or uh, buying it straight out of the shop. And so I did end up picking it up, but don't feel don't feel obligated to. So they have the Devil Dino down. I kind of want to do the 50-50. We can... No, no. Not the Swarm. The Lizard. We can run a 50-50 of if we discard Swarm or if we discard Stature. We don't have a better play line. Uh, I think we need to keep up with Tempo here. Not great odds, but I think we're going to take it. Snapzone did a quick analysis on the upcoming Token Tuesday bundles. Uh, they seem even better value. So I haven't looked at the about the, uh, the upcoming token bundles. I haven't looked at anything that came out from the patch yesterday. Ooh, we do win the 50-50. We will take a 50-50 coin flip um, just about every time. Especially since we're not at, in, at any increased risk of losing uh, any additional cubes. This might be a snap. Do you think it's worth playing negative right now or no because of Sandman? I don't necessarily think it's worth playing sand negative, but not exclusively because of Sandman. Uh, for me, Mr. Negative decks are pretty inconsistent. I haven't had a lot of luck. Like they can have a really big power ceiling, but the consistency that they drive is a little bit tougher to find. Um, I, if you enjoy Mr. Negative, I think it's fine um, to play it. Just play it a little bit cautiously when you might be running into a, into a Sandman. Um, same thing when Leech was like really prevalent. So I started dropping like my inverted Iron Man or my inverted cards on five instead of on six. So if you're running into a turn five Sandman drop, then uh, I would I, I would say you can still run your Mister Negative if that's what you're if, if that's what you're having fun playing. I think if you snap, they leave. Yeah, um, especially on the last turn, it turns it into a. From a one extra cube commitment to three, uh, that's a little bit more, that's a little bit scarier to swallow at that point. Basically, what he's saying is be less greedy on the final turn. Yeah. Yep. That's that's very true. Unless they had a very clear play line, um, it, it makes sense to retreat at that point. Yeah, just all the token for gold offerings seems great. Yeah, I, I like that they're adding some uh, some cheaper bundles and some uh, increased flexibility in uh, what you can buy um, and get tokens from. I think that's one of the most requested things that was coming from like the player feedback, and I'm really glad that they've that they've kind of leaned into that to see how it goes. But the final turn is for playing seven cards. Uh, it, it used to be. Um, but with Sandman, if you're seeing it a lot, you, you definitely need to be a little bit more risk averse. You need to kind of play your hand a little bit more. It gives them more information. Um, you're not going to get as many four and eight cube games, but you can stop from being completely bricked out of a game. So since we have a lot of cards here, I think we're going to go Moon Knight. We don't have Black Bolt. Uh, to enable our stature, we have the Dream Dimension. I think we're going to lean in on Moon Knight and Snap. I see you saw my arrow on purple. You think they should make the Season Pass uh, viable with gold? Um, I know that they did the in initial one, and I don't know. That's The Season Pass is just so much value for the money that you put in like if i was going to be a dolphin and just spend a little bit of money that's where i would put it um so i, I don't know i'm okay with it being uh a money only i think for gold it, you start getting i think i think there's that that tension between that and the bundles and then somebody said can you try a a ramp deck yeah i can the sandman ramp do you want me to try the one that i ran yesterday um held if so, I can absolutely do that. Minnow dolphin whale. <laughs> um, I'm definitely in, in whale status. Whale status now. 
you want you want to do a couple of games with the with this electro ramp i know a lot of people are not completely sold on it it is a pretty it's a flexible deck but at the same time it's very heavy handed so if you don't draw into any of your early plays so it, you have you have four options your electro thor jubilee or wong if you don't draw into any of those it's probably a hard retreat um but there's quite a few play paths that you can pick depending on what you do draw into uh hey tlsg how did you get the tracker to show up on stream um so i have a i'm i'm capturing the window um so in obs i used it as a as a window as a window capture and then i just cropped it so if we get cards added it actually expands but I have that underneath, like, the text in my, my webcam. Because, like, the Electro Ramp gets wrecked by Shuri. It does a lot of times. But then again, I think that's <laughs> I think that's true of just about any deck right now. Um, is that if you run into Shuri, you have a, you have a hard time. Um, you have a hard time winning. If they have their ideal draw. If they don't have their ideal draw, you can keep up with it. But if they have the Shuri into Red Skull, um, into the, the Taskmaster, it's really hard to compete. I think we ramp here. We do have the Black Panther we could, we could use on four. We could do Arnold Zola on five. And then we can do the Odin onto the Arnold Zola now. Electro is, is exactly the third best deck in the game at highest. Because you lose to Shuri and you lose to, to Thanos. Yeah. If they have if they have a good draw, um, I like you can't... By turn four or five, they've put so much power on the board. They have their... Um, their lockjaw out. If it's the Thanos version, um, then it's it's hard to come back from. Yeah, and it's not even like a close matchup. Like sometimes you can win. It's a majority of the time you're not going to stand a chance. So like this one with their with their Shuri, I I don't think there's any way that we can uh, come up with that much power. We can try, uh, but if they have an arrow, we're just completely out in the open. Struggled with Electro against Galactus. Yeah, I don't see Galactus all that often, but with the Electro ramp, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough because you don't have any way to pull their cards away from like that that ideal lane. Um, and so yeah, against Galactus, it's gonna be tough as well. Is this deck more consistent than the Ebony Maw version? I think it. I think this one just fits my play style a little bit better. I think they're both okay. Okay, we do get the arrow, so we're gonna move one Black Panther. Ooh, and actually that's going to be... No, that's not going to be enough. I, and I haven't ever ran into a lot of Galactus. If I'm running into it, so if people are, are really playing... I think at this point, people in my kind of pocket meta, a lot of people are kind of tired of Galactus. But if I do run into it, then a, a lot of times I switch over to something a little more mid-range, something that has the the ability to, to maneuver cards around. So this is the like the really heavy all-in ramp deck that I have and I actually played against a couple people in my in my discord where they ran like this version against mine and this one came out on top just by a small margin but it's also very susceptible to Killmonger you have no way to protect your Ebony Maw your Sunspot which is the the hardest kind of barrier that I have overcoming with this one I think I think we're I think we're safe now to turn the the sub alert back on or the the follower notification. Thank you everybody that jumped in and that has uh, that's hung out for a little while. I appreciate it. Uh, you're making my introduction into in, into Twitch uh, much more enjoyable. So this one leans this version of this deck leans. Okay, <laughs> now we get a whole bunch of follow sub no, notifications. I appreciate the the follows you guys. Um, this one leans much more heavily into the ramp component. And so you have arrow, you have the double arrow that you can utilize, uh, you have the sandman that you can lean into, the claw to push power to the side. So this one I think is a little bit more flexible, um, but it's just, I don't know, it doesn't have as high of a high roll potential. So it's a little bit scarier for me to play, um, because a lot of times it comes down to hey, just a one or two enough. power point differential. Um, thank you, 
within within all of those followers, I think we got a, a prime sub. Thank you to actually this may be just triggering everybody's. I mean we're gonna we're gonna turn it back off. I thought <laughs> I thought we'd be safe. Uh, but we're still getting a lot of follows. I appreciate it. And then Captain uh, Captain San Holo, thank you so much for the for the uh, tier one sub. So they blocked our electro. We can't ramp into our Sandman. This lane is protected. We could always do Sandman next turn. They have the Thanos list, but it could just get completely bodied by by being swarmed out early. Um, but I think we're gonna I think we're gonna stick it out for now, anyways. It's triggering all the old ones. Yeah, uh, I have to wait for it to completely clear that. I'll, I'll refresh it here in a minute, but we're, we're still getting new ones. So in, like in the activity feed, it's still coming through. Uh, what about Leech to try to counter Galactus or Shuri? You can you could run Leech in um, in either of these versions. Uh, I think Leech is very niche. So in a in a lockjaw list where you can get it out early or choose to drop it into a better higher power card, I, I like it. But outside of that, I, I have a hard time really committing to it. We could either do Wave or Sandman. I think we're going to lean into the Sandman because it's going to do the same. It's going to have the same impact. Right now, we don't have much that we can pull. We can pull their Cosmo out of Wakanda. Thanos is big. So this is going to be a... I think this is going to be another loss. We can use Magneto. They have one card that they can play. We would have to hope that they don't play into Wakanda and that they play into camp, uh, into the camp and that we can outpower whatever they play, which I think is very unlikely. We're going to send it anyways, uh, but I just... I don't, I don't think it's a... I, I think it's a much smarter retreat at this point though yeah for for me i've only got value out of leech in lockjaw um in like a ramp component i don't get as much value yeah we're definitely not winning this one so i don't know that there's ever a, a scenario unless you get your thanos early um, but especially with the Thanos being bumped up uh, that little bit in power, I don't know that there's ever a way to to to, to mirror it or match that power it can bring. Um, so even with an Electro, even with a Sandman, I, I think unless they just have a really bad hand, uh, I think Kame's right. I think it's still under that, still under Shuri. The better the better list aren't running Zola for the most part. It's really just Taskmaster that you're trying to hit. I, I, I like I like Zola just to make it a little bit uncertain, make the opponent a little uncertain of what our last turn play is. So it makes positioning an arrow a little bit more difficult. Um, and I, I like that uncertainty that it brings. I, I don't know that in its core is if the value is is worth the the payoff. Um, but I like that if they arrow and we're doing Arnold Zola, and if they arrow into that big lane trying to stack that in a Taskmaster, we can we can uh, end up getting what we wanted anyways. So it makes them second guess it. That leaves room for uh, human error. Whereas if they know that we're not running the, the Arnold Zola, then they can much more easily yeah they they can much more easily position the card where they want to. Uh, and it, it's a very I don't know. I, I don't know that on the on the latter, I've had a lot more success with with both rather than one. It gives you a little bit better chance of drawing into that second big power push as well. Uh, big Dan Chi, Big Dan Chaos playing my Thanos against all the Sandman decks so far. Uh, Locked on Stone Drop usually happen. Yeah, it usually happens by four. So five and six are just bringing out the big cards. Yeah, and every once in a while, you might still have low cost cards in your hand, but a lot of times you can just. But a lot of times you can just, um, did they block the Electro? They did with the Cosmo, right? Uh, but a lot of times you can just reorganize and play different cards. So play your big boys on those last couple of turns. So we might, do we snap anyways? We, we're tied here. We have the 12 power that Claw is going to provide into the sewer system. We don't know much about what they're running. I I will push a wave just because we don't have a, a another or a better play here. Could be a Galactus. 
Couldn't it wouldn't be a Galactus, right? With the armor and Cosmo? That doesn't seem likely. I think we Doctor Doom here into a claw mid. Depending on what and where they play. And I guess depending on what we draw into. We're not gonna claw mid. Never mind. Spider-Man's tough. An arrow could do it for us, but we have the Chavez, so we're not going to draw our arrow. We could send Odin back. Um, we don't have Sandman. We don't have Sandman to... Uh, ooh, yeah, if it is a Galactus, then this beats them. But they could also just play two cards. They could play a Shang-Chi and then a mid, like a low value. Yeah, we'll, we'll send the Goblin back, but if it's not a Galactus, then we, we lose. And with an armor, with a Cosmo, I don't think it's going to be a Galactus. We, we get the retreat, so whatever they had, they didn't have a good finisher. And I don't think I've been keeping up with this. I don't think we're anywhere close to 8 and 5. But we'll pretend that we are. Losing to She-Hulk? Yeah. Okay, when I try to game capture or window capture, the tracker, it just doesn't work. So it just doesn't pull anything? Because mine, all I had to do was select the... Like, my deck window, and then I cropped it from there. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried running uh, spider woman in that ramp deck in the ramp deck i think it'd be a good sub over like a gamora um so if they flood a lane you could get some pretty good value but i like gamora from that value that you can play or you can hit her with arnold zola you can play it into a wong lane and you still have really good value um but i do think it'd be uh, a decent I, I think it'd be a decent card we can do our this is the same the same person that retreated earlier they had the cosmo they had the armor So I think I don't think they're going to do both. I think they're probably running a like a, a a big powerhouse deck, and so I don't think they're going to stack armor and Cosmo into the same lane. I think they probably play Cosmo if they have it into Lemuria. Ooh, no, they play over into uh, the negative zone. So we do have Odin. We can eventually send that back. How do you do? Uh, came best. That's how I used to display my deck. I, I just did a snippet and saved that, uh, so it was like a JPEG. What an interesting expansion pool. Both cards have zero use right now. Um, but if any cards actually get destroyed, then they have a lot of potential value in their null. I don't think that Sandman is going to be great for us in this game. I think it's probably better to go Claw. Because um, I... For some reason, I feel like they're running a... A big power deck. No, they're running some kind of lockdown deck. <laughs> it's the it's the, uh, it's the X-Mansion difference. That's that's the game winner. <laughs> They're going to see what we play this turn. Ugh, they could Professor X lock the negative zone. We don't have a chance to send it back. We could do Doctor Doom. We could potentially do a Magneto. But, but if they lock this one down, we could always... I don't think that's great either. We don't pull anything with Magneto. So if we're afraid of the Professor X, then this should be fine. That's what we'll that's what we'll lean into. Uh, Lord Ramil, hey friend, thank you for the stream. Uh, do you have any entire Do you have any entry deck for pool three, pool two players? Uh, also, are you planning to do any free to play climbing to infinite? I might do some some free to play climbing at some point. I have like six different accounts um, on my YouTube channel. I have a lot of, it, they're a little bit dated now, but I had a lot of uh, like pool one and pool two specific builds. And then I did a, like a, a free to play series where I, I unlocked like one or two cards on my free to play account. And that's what I built my pool three deck around. And so you might check those out. I think there's some decent value still, um, still there, even if some of the cards may have changed over time. You just got Hawk from uh, Collector's Reserve. I was going to use my tokens for him. But I guess I'll use my tokens for Null now. That's, I mean, I, I don't get much use out of Null, but I think he's a decent card. 
Professor X lock in left lane. We got Null from Caches. I don't have Galactus. Any suggestions? I I haven't even with Galactus. I haven't played a lot with with Null. Um, I think he's a cool effect. I know a lot of people have tried him in like negative decks or negative destroyer, just general destroy decks. Um, but I think he's, I don't think he's incredibly consistent. Um, so you might try, a, I know that, I know that Jeff built a couple. You might try and look at some of those. I know that uh, KM Best did one with Galactus if you do pull it. Um, you may take a look at those, but I, I didn't, I didn't ever get much value from him. I think our biggest play would be this, but they're going to do a destroyer. And so unless we can beat 15 power, then we need to, uh, we need to retreat out. <laughs> <laughs> who hurt these children when they emote spam when they win by one power. I, that can be pretty frustrating yet. I'm glad that I don't go up against uh, emote spammers all that often, because if I did, I would probably have to mute everybody. I know that KM Best leans more towards muting people, uh, like muting their, their emotes. If I went up, up against them very often, I could see that being really tilting. Um, uh, I think you will check, uh, check on Jeff's deck and explore more. Uh, that's perfect. I think you'll find some decent builds. I, I don't know that anybody has done one that's just incredibly strong outside of a Galactus, um, but there are a couple of ideas that you can maybe look at and kind of build around. I think Retreat Later is very underused. I've seen so many people just instantly retreat, uh, but Retreating Later has saved me a ton of cubes. And, and it depends. So if you just... If you're just completely outpowered, then sometimes, and if they're playing really slow, sometimes playing it um, where you just retreat now is going to save you a little time. But if it's kind of close or a little, it could be either way, um, I always like to do retreat later when I can. I really wish they could give me a global mute. It, yeah, I know that that's been, uh, that's been frequently requested. Um, I Hopefully at some point that, that comes to the game. I find Null as good as an extra win condition, uh, not as a main. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because if he's if he's your like main build around, uh, you're gonna I think you're gonna have a, uh, it'll fall flat whenever it doesn't pay off, and you need multiple ways to play it out. So they used Lizard, they used Electro, um, they they can't play Galactus, so it has to be. I mean, even if it's not, I don't actually. Sandman's our best play here even though it's not great value uh, but I think they probably do something very similar with the Sandman they will never give a global mute because it'll auto nerf and completely kill JJ Jameson we can pull their Electra over um, we could do Claw this turn but that pushes a little power into Miniaturize Lab but then we still need a win elsewhere. Then we do that and we look for maybe how we can win otherwise. It is cube saving if you go negative one cubes. It's it's uh, mitigating your losses. A time is cubes waiting for a retreat later is a cube spew. Uh, sometimes if they're playing really slowly, sometimes that could be uh, that could be just as frustrating to wait on. I think they pretty easily have an Odin here, right? Odin would push five more here. That would bring them up to 12. But they could, they could also have an arrow or any other number of cards. We probably lose this one. We'll lock in the Mag Magneto mid. That's if they lean into the Odin to re-trigger their Doctor Doom. Um, we'll, we'll have the claw value. We can outpower it that way. That's like the only play line that that would have worked for. Retreat later is basically a waste of time. Just play another game and win the cubes back faster. Or or if you're real frustrated and you're spewing cubes, it could be saving you because you're not playing those cubes, those games where you're spewing those cubes. Evidently, second inner release stats on, re on retreat later and less than 1% of retreat laters result in a tie. Yeah, it, it very rarely happens where I retreat later and I, I don't lose a cube. I did have it happen a couple of times um, when I'm banking on the opponent having their one particular combo line. Um, 
<laughs> okay, I'm best. You figured it out. Uh, what was what was going wrong with it? I don't think we've seen Arrow since I switched over to this deck. Yeah, uh, and and if yeah, if they're roping and you're already a little frustrated, that could be even more tilting. Just waiting on it. So what did it end up being, Kane Best? I didn't even think retreat later worked until like a week ago. Yeah, I very rarely get anybody that retreats at the same time because a lot of times, you know, one person is very clearly at a bigger advantage than the other. Oh, there was a check mark in the in the settings of the of untapped. Yeah, I don't know that I would have found that. You you may you may be smarter than you may be smarter than uh, than I would have been in that scenario. Hey TLC, what do you think about Hawk on Mister Negative decks? Uh, now that Thanos is such a big part of the meta, and Hawk is uh, four zero. I I think Hawk is fine in a negative deck. Um, and especially one that runs Zabu because it's going to have that synergy with your your four cost cards. So then you have the option of either negative or Hawk. Um, but I don't think you play enablers in it. Um, so I think it's just either a 4-6 or a 0-10. I don't think you play anything that leans into making them stronger. Uh, I, think, I think that if you do, it starts feeling bad if you get those inverted or reversed. Well, it wasn't labeled as make it capturable. No, and I wasn't I wasn't being snarky when I said I don't think I would have found it. I, I really I'm really not sure I would have. <clears throat> so we're gonna pull their Nakia over. Um on the last turn we have a Doctor Doom we can play in mid. That would push a, a buffed up version of their Doom bot over into Washington DC. We could also potentially lean into the arrow. Mr. Black, is Shuri a strong deck? It's a little bit. It might have, I mean, it, it might do decently. It might be an okay deck. It's a, it's a very, it's a very, very strong deck right now. It's probably the strongest deck in the game. Um, in terms of just how much power it can push out consistently. It's, it's kind of absurd. Thor 33 a bot? Actually, even with the arrow, we can't really do a whole lot. Actually, unless they can impact two lanes, then we just win this one, yeah? Dr. Doom will push five power mid. We beat it there. Um, we'll push eight power to the right. Thanos is the strongest. Then Shuri? Uh, I think... I think it's really close, and I think it depends on how you play it and what tech decks you have, or what tech cards you have. That was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be, but we still do get the win. Um, so I think in a like, a, I think in a like a tournament scenario, I, I think Thanos probably takes the edge over a Shuri deck, um, just because once you discover that like Shuri's playline or ability, like that is that is it. You they can play around that, um, whereas Thanos has a lot more flexibility. But I think from a laddering scenario, um, I, th I think they're both just about as good. I think they're really uh, neck and neck. Claw would have been more net power uh, with the sunspot soak. Yep, yep, you're right. Um, no, uh, so because the because the right lane was um, the one that buffed up vanilla cards. Yeah, Claw would have been one less power um, if if it didn't buff up my my Doombot to the right, then then Claw would have been the better play. I think they did Doctor Doom math, but didn't account for the Sunspot. They might have. Uh, that may have been what they were banking on. Thanos is in my token shop, and I'm only 300 tokens shy of 6,000. That's huge. Um, I, I'm, I'm typically not very quick to tell people to what to spend their tokens on but i think thanos has a lot more benefits than some other cards so with thanos never being dropped down in 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 tiers he's always going to be six thousand. so you never have to 
worry about it getting degraded on the next downgrade. Um, and so, and with him being as strong as he is, if if you like, I would say if you like a like Thor, Jane Foster, Lockjaw style deck, and you like that kind of play line, uh, Thanos is very similar. Option for Doctor Doom, I don't think there's a good replacement. The ability, he, the ability he has to go wide, uh, I don't think that can be replicated. Um, at least not in like a, a true Electro Ramp. If you're trying to build an Electro Ramp without Doctor Doom, I think it would be better to go with like a lockdown version. So something that runs like a like a Professor X, uh, maybe maybe your Gamora, maybe your Hobgoblin, something to really mitigate the the benefit that the opponent can have. Squirrel, Squirrel Girl is mini Doom. You, you could do Squirrel Girl. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise it, but you could. So we only know that they have Cosmo. Um, I I think Sandman. I don't know. Claw may be our play. We're gonna do Claw. Uh, we're gonna do Claw into left. That'll push more power to the right. That gives us a little bit more tempo. Um, and then we can look, depending on what they play, to decide if we want to slow it down and play Sandman. No, with a Shuri, uh, Sandman's not gonna give us a lot of value. Ugh. We could try to Magneto pull their Cosmo into whatever lane. So I think they probably play it here. And then if they're going with Arnold Zola, we try to play it and move it over. I think it depends on where they play here. That will determine our last turn, um, what we play for our last turn. Yeah, they could task or Zola. So depending on if they play it into the open spot, um, I think that gives us a lot of information. So the red skull to the left, that that's going to be a, a taskmaster. So where do they play their taskmaster? Is the is the only is the only question. Um, and it comes down to it, it comes down to a read or a 50-50 flip. I think they play their taskmaster into camp. Taskmaster mid zero right? Is that how you would do it, Echno? I was thinking the the power differential that they would have to overcome is is bigger in Wakanda. I guess not that pumping 34 power is going to do anything different. So you may be right. We'll take your read, Ekno. We'll go against my gut. We'll go again. We'll go with yours. So I could see you being right. We'll see. We'll see what they end up playing. We're hoping that we block the, uh, yay, Ekno, you, <laughs> you gained us, you netted us some cubes. Uh, Ekno, your, your read was right. The Titania was a little bit different than the zero, but, um, it was a very good read. <laughs> and we, we dethrone, we dethrone the champion. Um, you, it, it, it comes down to luck, uh, like very specific play lines against Shuri, but you're definitely not favored in that match matchup. Bartholomew, sheesh. Yeah, yeah. That one could go either way. And so maybe this version of Electro has some has some some grit to it. I think the Aerotech is really important in being able to mitigate certain like, um, like Galactus play lines or really impact that opponent. Um, so this one, I mean, this one might be pretty. This one might be pretty decent. Yeah, the Cosmo was the was the goodest of boys. <clears throat> it's with project pegasus they oh how much do they flood here it's a thor deck depending on if they play one of their big cards and they're gonna do their uh their stones later I think if they have Lockjaw, they do all of it this turn. They do the Lockjaw, they do the stone rotation, because the stones are free. But we'll see. It's not it's not a good enough positioning to snap into, but I think it gives us an okay okay advantage depending on how they play here. Milky Snap, how's it going? It has been a, a really long time. They They just use the reality stone. So maybe they were soaking the rest with She-Hulk?
but milky i hope it's been i hope it's been going well for you i haven't we haven't connected i think it's been since the game launched is what it feels like um i hope it's been going well for you i'm glad to i'm glad to see you in a in a stream <laughs> the game is already over snap so they can leave yeah we'll put them out of their misery <laughs> they, yeah they could have got brick handed too i guess uh, but with seven energy they should have been able to play something i think they were probably going for the she hulk so they could do the free she hulk and something else on that on that next turn yeah and, <laughs> and sandman shot that one down uh doing good are you enjoying this sandman change i i'm not sure whether it's a whether it's a buff or whether it's um just like a, a side grade i think some of the decks he was good in before he's no longer able to be played and then it enables a few different archetypes so it's i don't know if i enjoy it or not i think it's interesting um so i think only time will tell if sandman becomes like very common in the meta so if like uh shri decks get tuned a little bit i i fear for what the meta looks like uh because i could see it being i could see it being very frustrating to go up to go up against sandman game after game and then R. Smith, you were on YouTube before, uh, switching to Twitch going forward. I was on YouTube doing live streams before. I think I like streaming on Twitch a bit better um, because I don't have to worry about um, like launching a stream. So if I, so the season pass, whenever that comes out and we have a brand new card, for example, right now uh, I, I do a, a quick video on that new card, but then after that, I feel like I can't do a live stream because that's going to impact the, the video and how well that does. So if I stream on Twitch, I can release the video on YouTube and then jump straight over into Twitch and not have any any like strife between the two. And so I, I would like to switch fully over to Twitch, but I am feeling it out for now. So it really depends on how it goes. She-Hulk's not good. Yeah, so She-Hulk's a lot more difficult now. <laughs> um, so if you're running into Sandman. Uh, can you upload more YouTube shorts? I miss those though, for sure. I, I, I want to, um, I definitely want to, it's, I have, I have a list. I, I keep a pen and paper list of like different things that I want to do. I have a list of like six or seven different shorts that I want to create. It's just finding time to sit down and do it. Um, but yeah, that is definitely on my list. Uh, the Garth cast that's on my list of things to do. Can't people just run enchantress if Sandman becomes problematic? Not necessarily. So with Sandman and where he's at now, so before he before he wasn't as impactful because you would drop him early and it it would it'd be such a low tempo drop that it, it didn't really impact as much you had time to counterplay against it um with this one if you drop him as they intend on just a turn five surprise drop there's there's no way to enchantress it the next turn if you ramp into it you only have that one turn and using a four power turn five plays really really low tempo and so overcoming that after that point also becomes very difficult and so i don't think enchantress would would ever be a good like counter to to the sandman meta if that's what we find ourselves in so we can either do claw or dr doom um dr doom would only be good if we end up using if we end up drawing odin this is very likely a Cerebro Valkyrie deck. They can only... Oh, no. We don't have Sandman on the board, so they can drop more than one card. I think we're going to do Claw and leave the door open for a potential Doctor Doom or to play over into the left lane. Do you think they should nerf Sandman <laughs> to a 4-1? <laughs> I think he's a lot more... I think he's a lot harder to use at a 4-1. Um, Rogue the Sandman never fails. If you, if you have that intuition and that, like, you know exactly when it's coming down... You can you can absolutely make that happen. So they extend the game. It's a Cerebro three deck. There's anytime you see Quake, Rhino, like Scarlet Witch, you know it's a Cerebro three. And so then figuring out a way to push more power than what they can do. Unfortunately, Sandman has been in the bottom of our deck, so they can do Cerebro and Mystique on this turn or next turn. Um, they could probably do Mystique and then something else. And there's always the potential for a Valkyrie play. We have to be aware that that's a possibility. Since they're not limited, they could also do Valkyrie and a Blade. Win two different lanes. Because if they do Blade in the left, that's going to be five. It pushes them to 16. 
We might still win with the Doctor Doom. A Mystique might be tough, though. Yeah, we got Sandman just in time. Uh, just when we needed him. I think a Doctor Doom might still win it. I think the Valkyrie, if they go the Valkyrie path, I think that would be mid. And then they, their one cost would be left. Because we have the extra push from Claw. That makes it a little difficult. Valkyrie does give them more power in Limbo if... Ooh, no. So they go the Mystique path, huh? We'll see if we outpower it. Yeah, the poor Sarah Enjoyer. So just when Sarah Tech started kind of coming back into um, into the, the swing of things, it, it gets completely out outpowered or outshattered. We lose the left lane after the soak by one. Uh, by one small point. It, that was the wasp difference. No, we would have lost the tiebreaker. But that still feels a little bit worse. Ah, feels so bad. I mean, overall, we've been having good luck, so I can't I can't complain. We're, we're positive 17 cubes. A lot of times on my streams, I get so distracted by chat that I go super negative. So we're, we're doing all right. It's just I know that uh, Cerebro 3 is such a tough deck to navigate consistently. Um, it always feels bad whenever we drop one to them. Oh, no, you literally just built a, a Sarah deck after opening her yesterday. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> That's very, very tough. I, I don't think Sandman is everywhere. I think you could honestly still play it. But if Sandman comes down, you, it's probably an instant retreat. <clears throat> um, otherwise, I think she's probably still fine against most matchups. I don't think the Electro Ramp Sandman is strong enough to uh, to like overcome most of the other meta. So I, I, I think you're probably okay. So even though their Iceman hit our Sandman, we can wave into Sandman. We get some benefit from the Claw, but not if we have Sandman out on the board. Our Ebony Maw is useless now, but if we... I mean, everything else is just fine. It's better than it hitting something like a Magneto. We have the, yeah, we have the strongest Ebony Maw now. He's, uh, he's going to be unstoppable. And then, uh, are we streaming on Twitch now? I, I want to. Uh, I think I want to... I, I've been back and forth on it for a little while. I've tried... I've, I've tried it both ways. And I think the the best way to allow my like YouTube videos to really push in in that in that realm and let my live streams push in their own kind of aspect is to have them on the different platforms. Uh, my biggest issue with streaming on YouTube not not the, like the platform, not the you know anything else that it has, but the biggest issue is um, that it interferes with how well your videos can do in the algorithm. So if I release a video on a new card and then I want to stream it then they're competing against each other and neither one does as well as if they were separate. And so uh, that's that's what's been kind of building around my mind, at least for, for a little while. <clears throat> so with the Sandman, playing into Vibranium Mines feels a little bit tough, but we do have the Doctor Doom to spread power across the board. Actually, we could arrow to the right, Doctor Doom... It's either that or we arrow now and then or we claw now and then arrow into vibranium mines maybe we do that save the arrow for the last turn to pull whatever they play uh steel deity I, i'm hopping off have a good stream thank you so much for joining us steel deity uh, i hope that you have a great rest of your day i'm glad you jumped in and joined us for a little while youtube's live experience is pretty meh yeah no offense just but discoverability is just basically dead yeah i it's I think the actual streaming is is fine. It has you know the core things that has the core things that you need, but discoverability um, outside of your videos, like gaining a new audience, I think is tough. But then again, if you're a small streamer on Twitch, it can be difficult to kind of build that following as well, unless you're doing some really really long hours or getting lucky with a couple of big raids. Um, and so I think I think each have their own thing. I think Twitch and like the extensions, the different things that they can do, um, is well over what YouTube can do. So like the the channel point system, the different uh, the different emotes, the different uh, like just the control you have over the viewer experience, um, I think is is a lot better. Uh, I'd be interested to know more about the YouTube algorithm. I'm worrying about putting out too much. Uh, about putting too much content out. Uh, so I, it, it's really, I don't know. It, it's, it's very touchy. And I go back and forth on it, depend, like improper content spacing. 
yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I definitely haven't figured it out. It's something that I go back and forth on. So with the algorithm, I found that, so my, like my videos that do really well, I have to give them time to kind of flourish. Um, so if they're, if they're pushing, I need to stay out of the way, their way and, and let them push. That's why I haven't released another video outside of the, the ramp one I did yesterday, because that had a really good initial traction, which is kind of helping carry it over for a while. Um, but if I release another video, then that, you know, it splits, it, it basically halves the, the hourly views that the one that was pushing before gets. So I don't know. I think it's a delicate balance. You want one video a day on YouTube, uh, max of two. Yeah. If you do more than two, and that's another reason and some strife I was having was that if I did two videos and a live stream, not everyone was getting the notification for everything because they start competing against each other. Um, but shorts, shorts don't seem to, uh, to have an issue. Uh, shorts are a, a, a different, a different algorithm. So uh, shorts don't seem to impact the long form content, but live streaming does seem to impact like that notification, uh, going out. <clears throat> and anytime I launch a live stream, like the video that was releasing, it's like the, the viewership gets cut in half because now the algorithm's pushing that live stream and live streams and videos on demand just don't do as well in the long run. And so there's a lot of like, I don't know, back and forth that, I, that I've done with it. Mm -hmm. Yep, they start. Yeah, uh, a lot of times they do start cannibalizing each other, uh, depending on because then your like, click through rate and your overall like initial 48 hours is going to be a little bit smaller. So, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. Learning about the YouTube algorithm is not something I ever like was like really thought I was going to find myself diving into, but it's something that can really impact how well, not, not, not necessarily the content quality, but how well that individual video does. And it's, it can be so rewarding and frustrating at the same time. Uh, you do a life, a live stream and then release the video at the end, but that's, but that's difficult. Um, so if we're doing like a new card release and we do the battle pass, well, that loses a lot of that initial buzz that you're going to get on YouTube from it. And so I would want to do the video first and then live stream, but then they're gonna, then they're gonna hurt each other. But yeah, no, I, I, I like the idea of doing it that way, but I think for this game, though, like the Sandman, uh, I think the video itself will do better than the live stream in the long run. And so I don't know. I don't know. It's tricky. Ooh, I think we just won this match <laughs> with the turn four arrow, yanking all of their stones into the right lane instead of letting them rotate. That is uh, very unfortunate. And we'll we'll go ahead and we'll put them out of their misery. We'll go ahead and snap on it. What helps you more than asking for subs in the YouTube algorithm is making people go to another one of the videos um, in your channel after watching. It'll suggest your video more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I found <laughs> TLSG rambling. My bad, Forrest. Yeah, I found... <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really bad about doing that. Um, so I'll stop. I'll stop rambling. But I found that the actual subscriber numbers doesn't necessarily matter as much as like the overall watch time. So if someone's watching a higher percentage of your videos and they're leaving the platform less, they're going to get recommended it more. Uh, why not Sandman here? Uh, we could have. Uh, Sandman may have been the better play. I was just thinking of spreading out our power all the way across the board. You're right. If, if we were guaranteed Mojo World, you're dead. That was the play. That was the play. I was I was a, I was rambling as uh, as Forrest delicately put it. Um, and then Aries, my bad. I have to adjust the the night bot. Uh, I know that it uh, I know that it banned your message it, and your message was just the snap dot fan link. So you said, hey, just wanted to say anytime I see one of your decks on snap dot fan, I always check out the video because I think you make some great videos. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so I'm so, I'm so sorry that uh, the bot uh, immediately uh, deleted your your message, but I'll 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 adjust the the night bots settings after this. But no, I do I do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, um, the content spacing I think is big, and that's what I'm trying to work on too because I think for a little while I was flooding too much. Um, so some days I was doing two video releases and a live stream and it just like overwhelmed, you know, your, your core audience. And so Forest Law, thank you so <laughs> thank you so much for the tier one sub. Um, and then uh, R Smith, thank you so much for the tier one sub as well. It is very greatly appreciated. 
So we could easily lose this one. Okay, no, we do... Oh, the rotation could end up hurting us, right? If we lose this one because we didn't Sandman when we should have, we deserve to, to lose the cubes. Oh, we deserve to lose those cubes. Oh, that's so that's so unfortunate. It's a very good play, but still unfortunate. Oh. Thank you guys so much for the follows, by the way. Uh, Ares and Fred, thank, thank you so much. We deserve to lose those four cubes. We had a better play line. Uh, we had the better play line in the Sandman on four... The Sandman on five, after we had capped out this right lane to lock down Mojo World, we just unfortunately did not capitalize on it. <laughs> Do you have a list of adjectives for the titles? Um, I don't. Uh, it's something that it's it, it, it has to come to me in the moment. Yeah, man, the Thanos stones are our next level. Um, but no, I, I I try to I try to vary it. And it's not something I necessarily like about YouTube. And uh, like it, the click through rate is just because it's more enticing. Um, it's so enticing to see like, oh, what is this build? I, but I don't, I respect the game. I don't like the game, but I respect it. And so I, I, it's, def it's definitely something that I'm still finessing, like the YouTube video titles and, uh, the adjectives that I, that I add, <laughs> that I add onto the thumbnails. So with Nidavellir, I think we, typically we wouldn't play Psylocke here, um, since we have our Electro. But with Nidavellir, we're going to get more value out of having a second body in Nidavellir than letting Sunspot soak. But we'll go ahead and throw her on them. <laughs> Phase Stone is bull. Phase Stone is one, of, is one of the strongest ones. It allows Thanos to have the flexibility he has. Um, and it could be it could be very scary. We played Turtle Time earlier, right? Were they running the... Were they, were they running the Galactus deck? They might have been. We're not going to be able to arrow into the big house. So if they yeah, if they do that and then stack something else there, we're not going to be able to stop the Galactus play from happening. So we save our arrow for next turn. Do we play Sandman? I don't think we get any benefit out of out of wave. So we Sandman to the right, try to hold down initiative. Um, so that we're priority, so that we can pull their card over into Nid Ooh, the Doc Ock is... Never mind. We're not going to be able to do that. Arrow Odin, yeah. Arrow Odin would have been good as well. They have, a, they, have a, they have a free Galactus that they can... We can't We can't do anything about. Our only advantage is that if they play it here, they can only play one card. Um, and so we're going to have... Uh, some non shang chiable cards in the hub is like the only like slim advantage um, that I can that I can muster. We'll have the Chavez come down next turn. It's still not great uh, because they're going to destroy like 50 or 60 worth of power. So the Null wins this every time. <clears throat> so this will. We don't even need to. We don't even need to wait for the animation. We're going to go ahead and retreat. Um, I, it's always, I always want to stay against a Galactus because my hubris tells me I can beat it. Odds, of, odds are you can't. Um, if they can pull off the Galactus combo, most of the time you're not going to be able to beat it. There's no point in risking that much more. Should I buy the Deadpool bundle? I only spend money on battle pass and bundles with free to play gold. Uh, PS, I don't play Deadpool at the moment. In, in terms of pure value... Um, in terms of pure value, the, the Deadpool bundle is strong. Um, I, I have heard, I haven't looked at the bundles. I have heard that some of the future bundles are going to be a little bit smaller and better value overall. Um, but any of the, any of the bundles that have tokens are, are very valuable, but I don't know if you're saving up, you may look at what the future bundles are going to be. So like the small, like token Tuesday, I think is what somebody said. You may look at those to see if that's going to be a better fit uh, for for your gold. I think I I bought it, but I'm a whale, so like definitely take that with a grain of salt. Um, but I think I think it I think it is a decent value. So they played Green Goblin. I, I'm a little bit worried about them being able to further cap out our Elysium lane. We do have Claw that we could play and push over into Asgard, but I don't know that we want to. 
And if they don't play a one or a two cost card here, then using the arrow and leaning in on Polaris is going to be very scary. We could always... Actually, we don't have the ramp component. We couldn't arrow into Doctor Doom, could we? Not consistently, we couldn't. Elysium Galactus can come out next turn. Yeah, uh, arrow needs to be saved to try to position it wherever they play. But at the same time, I don't want to play Claw here. I'm just going to play the players. Um, I was holding on to the players, but I want to save it. Ooh, so they're keeping their options open. So he's five costs, but they don't have any anything that's ramped up, right? Uh, what does TLSG stand for? Uh, the late streamer got there. <laughs> I try to do a different origin story every time it's it's asked. Uh, the true origin of it is that live stream guy. Um, so from years ago, I had a channel that I was active on for all of like uh, a couple of days. And um, they pulled our arrow and our Odin again, which feels so bad. I, I was active on for a couple of days. I thought it'd be funny if someone watched it, told their friends, hey, have you seen that live stream guy? And their answer is which one? Um, and chat during that time shortened it to TLSG for short. So we don't have a target for our Magneto here. Um, we can't send their goblin back with Odin to block the Elysium lane. Uh, they haven't snapped though, so I don't think they have exactly what they need just yet. Uh, maybe. They could play uh, they could play a hobgoblin here and then do a last turn Galactus potentially, which is also not great. <clears throat> well, they're just gonna do, they're just gonna do a turn five non non snap Galactus, which is interesting. If they had snapped, I would have left. Yeah, I guess Wave could have been the play, um, but we just have so much you know, so much to overcome here. Wave would make it where they could only play one card. We could lean in with like the Chavez, but then, then we're still in the same conundrum with if they have a Null, do they outpower us? I don't, I don't like the rematch, uh, Turtle Time. I think we beat them on the first time around, but we definitely lost the, the next two. Yeah, I think this is uh, best because credit is too good too, but token is a lot better. Yeah, the tokens will let you buy exactly what you want, but if you're still completing Series 3, the credits can can go pretty far. I think we're going to switch back over to Stature for just a little bit. Uh, we've, we had decent luck with the Electro Ramp deck, um, but I feel like trying out Stature for a little while. Uh, I like Stature in this like kind of value style build. Um, very similar to the core that Freddy Babes ran with uh, just a small couple of modifications. Um, but I like that you can just put your unshang chiable This one still loses to Shuri. A lot of times it can beat the Thanos matchup, though, because of the Killmonger. Um, but I think just about everything it, it has a hard time matching up in, into Shuri. I haven't found anything to, that just hard counters it besides a really well-played Thanos deck. <laughs> we have the iron fist we don't have any cards that get value from it right now necessarily um i think we are going to go ahead and play our iron fist though next turn depending on what we draw into we could do a three cost card and then that would allow us to do a three cost and miles on turn four uh, to push some pretty good value. Is it a bad idea to lock Galactus on shop without all pool three? I personally don't find playing Galactus very fun. Uh, very, Galactus is very like a very linear, straightforward. You can only win most of the time in that one scenario. I, and it doesn't feel flexible enough to me. Um, some people really enjoy the Galactus play line. I, it's not. It's just not one that resonates for me. So I think it really depends on uh, if you think you're going to really enjoy Galactus. For me, it's one of my least used cards. I have one of the coolest variants I have 
or Galactus, but he, I, I, I haven't even been able to upgrade it. <clears throat> I think we're going to play Lizard here. It's going to double his power, push him over into cloning vats, but it's not. Hey, Jeff, how's it going? We have the we have the the hoog sleeps. Um, are you? How was your stream today? I hope it went well. My bad. Oh, my bad. It's because I'm roping, right? Is that why? Is that why I put you to sleep? My bad. That's a bad habit of mine. Whenever I'm streaming, whenever I'm playing on my own, uh, yeah, I I play a lot more quickly. I get so distracted when I'm when I'm streaming. Oh, uh, note taken. So they. I really like this interaction with stature um is the cloning vats so since <laughs> it was uh, reasonable until snap matchmaking died on me did it really so you just weren't able to match into into anybody oh he was saying galactus was boring that makes more sense <laughs> so stature since her since her upside carries over it's not like miles where it's only active for that one turn um you can clone her with the cloning vats. She comes back into your hands. She's still one cost. You can just continue to get that value, um, which is phenomenal. Uh, you just continue to have one cost cards that you can throw onto the board throughout the game. It kept hanging at the loading screen, and then I'd reconnect having missed the first turn. Ooh, yeah, I haven't had that happen for a while, but there was one point where um, I had some similar issues come up. But it was on my mobile phone, so it wasn't on my 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 tethered internet account. Hopefully, it's resolved soon, though. So you had to cut it a little. You had to cut it. You had to cut it pretty early, right? I think we're gonna double stature again. We have the Killmonger. As long as we can have initiative going to this last turn, we can pull whatever they want to hide behind Invisible Woman out, um, and then we can drop another stature as well. The Killmonger does kill the Iron Fist, but it's it. I think it's okay. I, th I think we're okay with it. So as long as they don't have a huge push in the cloning vats, uh, the arrow just wins it for us. No matter, no matter really where we play. I guess they could like counter arrow us, but I, I think we're okay. I don't. I don't. I can't think of a play line that would. Put them in a winning spot here. Oh, the Hella. Oh my gosh. I didn't even see what they had discarded. Was it the only the one? Okay. Arrow the Hella? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Had we not had Arrow, or had we, yeah, had we not had Arrow, whether we had initiative or not, they would have hit, hidden Hella behind Invisible Woman. It's so it's so risky to go that all in on, on the Hella build, especially with Arrow being as popular as she is. It's just, it's so hard to do. Yeah, that would that would have been it. That would have been such a big hella had it went off how they intended. Uh, but with Cosmo and Arrow in practically every deck, it, it's hard to lean that heavily on it, especially with the Invisible Woman given like that, uh, like that dead giveaway that you're wanting to build up your combo in that lane. You get the TVA, which if... We have the lizard value. If we happen to draw into swarm, we get a lot of value there. I think we're gonna stay. Quinjet in a non-Thanos deck. I wonder if they have a way to change the TVA. We do have Killmonger to take care of their their Quinjet in the left lane. I think we have an okay shot. Oh, am I? No, yeah, we <laughs> we're definitely not. 144. My bad. I uh, I double triggered it. I mean, we're <laughs> we've been on a tear. We have 144 wins. We can't be we can't be beaten. It's a uh, it's 14 wins. <laughs> uh, four is my key bind to start recording, so I hit it one more time to take it off. I forgot. I messed up. They're gonna have the one power sentinels. I think we drop Killmonger this turn, and then we can try and figure out where our best value is from here. I opened Invisible Woman and Hello back to back, uh, but no discard cards so far. 
I think the most consistent way to build Hela a lot of times now is not inside of an Invisible Woman shell. Uh, because that's that's just like a, a red flag that, that you're running Invisible Woman. And so if they have a counterplay to it, uh, it's very easy for them to kind of set up and, and play around it. The players could pull one of their Sentinels. We have a couple of play lines we could go with. If we... I think we always have to do the Swordmaster here. We took care of their Quinjet, so they can't drop their one-cost Sentinel along with another three-cost card. Ooh, no, our, we, would, we would need to order this differently. We would need to do the Swordmaster first. We don't want to stack it all in one lane. This would push it down to a tiebreaker. We might lose this one, but we're going to risk it. Yeah, the order, yeah, the order would have been bad. So they win the left by three. We win the right by three, and we tie mid. So it's a complete tie. It's almost like maybe Hela isn't a very good card. She... <laughs> I don't know if I would go so far as to say she's not a good card. Um, I, she has a lot of power potential, but she's also very counterable. Same thing with Black Panther. Uh, Black Panther, he can be really, really strong, but his playline is so linear that if they have a counter to it, it's very easy to identify. Um, and so I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that makes Black Panther just a bad card. I think it just makes him less competitive. Same thing with Hela. You can get some really high roll Hela games. But if you have a but if you have a counter to it, uh, you, you're you're risking your cubes, and a lot of times you're going to hang bigger cube gains in the process. Um, and then, and then Jeff, thank you so much for the follow, man. Um, as well as the raid, that that raid was huge. I, I haven't seen those kind of numbers ever. Um, I think even on on YouTube, my biggest stream has been just around 1,000. Uh, so it was very very surprising, very greatly appreciated. <clears throat> It's okay, you don't have to say it, we will. Yeah, I, I, I guess you can say it that way. <clears throat> you counter yourself on Hela, and it makes me... <laughs> you counter yourself on Hela, you, it makes me so mad. Good to see you over here on the Twitch side. I always forget YouTube live streams exist. I... Yeah, and I, I think it pushes too much into the YouTube algorithm. So I, I, my streams are going to be much smaller on this side. Um, but I think it creates a good divide. So if I release a video, I can still feel free to stream um, and not have to worry about it tanking the algorithm by pushing the live stream instead of the video. So I think if I'm streaming like longer streams, it makes much more sense over on Twitch. It was just a really intimidating change to make. Uh, but I do like a lot of the... Uh, like the, the control and the features that Twitch has that YouTube doesn't. Is, is Stature a fun card? I like it. Um, it it's very mid-rangey, so it's not something that is going to just completely define uh, a, a meta like Thanos. It's not like you can throw it into the deck and it just creates its own entity. Um, but in like a mid-range value build, I think it has a lot of really, really solid, really strong play lines. It's also good to diversify where your content money comes from. Yeah, especially with like if I ever do like sponsored streams or anything like that, it becomes much more difficult on YouTube because you're going to you're going to tank your 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 metrics, your numbers. Um, and so it becomes. Yeah, uh, I think it is good to diversify and have a couple of different platforms that you're um, like kind of splitting that focus in rather than just the one. But that being said, a lot of times when I launch the stream here, I'm only streaming to about 40 people. So I think it I think it'll just take me doing this consistently uh, rather than it being a little bit uh, like wishy washy. So I don't think we ever win the highest power in throne room card. Um, they could always do a destroyer or a death or something big in that lane. I I almost think we just let our Vulture get discarded. We're not going to play it next turn. We could do Black Bolt and hope for a stature top deck, but that's kind of uh, unlikely. I think we're going to stack it this way. I think you'll be top five snap streamers any time you're live if you start streaming here. Yeah, I think if it's... I think if it's more consistent, uh, Dad, I think I think that's a definitely, definitely 
a big piece in pushing some uh, some traffic this way. Said so if you want to push more people over here, set some videos to publish on YouTube when you know you'll be live on Twitch, and put that in the intro um, that you're likely live. So uh, that's actually a really good idea because I have one that I'm just I'm gonna publish after the stream ends. I just I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to publish it too early, and so I that could have driven a lot more traffic. You're right. Um, that's something that I'll I'll start looking into to see. Yeah, dropping gems, especially on like Battle Pass card night. So I always rush to get some kind of build, some kind of video featuring it, and then I'd like to stream. And so I think that's a good segue. We're going to go ahead and retreat out of this one. Um, it's We could stay in for it for, for one additional cube, but for three additional cubes, it just with how bad that last turn hand was going to be, um, it wouldn't be worthwhile. Yep, that's the content brain. Uh, so shot, I the uh, the bot may be broken. I'll I'll just I'll just link my channel. I need to I need to fix the the night bot. I had it set for YouTube, but it's still it's still switching over and coming this way. And so let me let me get my my channel link for you, just in case anyone jumped over from from Jeff and or or just from the Discover page and they haven't seen my content. A lot of our stuff is over on YouTube. So if you kind of like the, I guess, maybe chiller vibes, I, I hear I hear I hear that word a lot. If you like the calm, like the calmer vibes, you might like some of my YouTube ch content. Definitely jump over and check it out. Um, and thanks, everyone, for the follows, by the way. Uh, the support has been massive. We've jumped like 300 followers this stream. Largely in part due to uh, a couple of really, really fortunate raids, which I'm really grateful for. The humble vibes. Yeah, that's a, that's another one I hear a lot. I hear I hear very like relaxed, humble, and uh, every once in a while I hear like Matt Matt Murdock vibes. I hear that I look like Matt Murdock quite a bit. Not necessarily with with longer hair, but whenever it's a little bit shorter, I hear it quite often. I don't necessarily see it, but others do. So they're running a Thanos deck as well. If we draw into our Killmonger, we get a lot of value here. <laughs> Daredevil confirmed. My favorite sentence is, <laughs> is all right. Uh, every every single game that we start, whenever it's not on stream, I don't do it on stream just because it's not quite as as structured. But it's just uh, something that has <laughs> that has happened on uh, on my videos that I've kind of leaned into is kind of like part of the branding. Put on glasses. I I have glasses. I they have a really bad glare. So anytime I start streaming, I I put in my contacts, but. Um, I did think about buying the uh, like the Daredevil style or Matt Murdock style glasses at some point. No Moon Girl. So in in this version, this one's meant to be a little bit more mid range or more consistent. Uh, the Moon Girl version definitely has a higher high roll. It has a higher ceiling. Um, but I found it. I, my hand was clunky a lot of times, so I wasn't able to find optimal play lines as easily. Um, so I like this one just a little bit better. So with the Space Stone, we can actually buff up our Vulture even without the Iron Fist. I think we play both into the X Mansion. We move one over into either Hell's Kitchen or Crimson Cosmos, depending on what they play. Um, they're capped out. Oh, never mind. They had the Space Stone. They're they're not they're not capped out in X Mansion. So cards can be pushed over six cost now. Did one of mine get pushed over six? Um, you can with. I think it's with Icebox. I. I think it's Icebox that can hit one of the six cost cards. There's like one very niche or very unlikely ways that it can. Um, I don't think it happens all that often, but it but it is a possibility. Yeah, uh, Icebox can do it. Iceman is capped at six, um, and it has that written in the text. Uh, but Icebox is just really unfortunate. That was a beautiful that. That's just... Without a Shang Chi, and I originally had Shang Chi in this over the over the Vulture and Iron Fist just for a little bit uh, better protection against like really high power plays, and it's something that I'm still filling out in in this version of the deck. Uh, I think there's I think there's strengths in both ways that you play it, um, depending on what you're facing. So if we're running into a lot of Shuri decks, uh, the 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 Shang Chi may be something that that needs to be added back. Yeah, but the <laughs> the Logjaw roll was huge on that one. Um, we might have been able to combat it with a 
uh, with a Shang-Chi. But even then, I think they had the Space Stone again, so they could have moved their Lockjaw or one of their big cards, and it would have been spread out across three lanes, and that would have been really tough to overcome. The only card that didn't get hit uh, was Lizard. <laughs> that one is... It, it will happen sometimes. It's not likely, but it is But it is uh, something that happens from time to time. And then Snap Snip Snap. I followed you here after seeing your Cerebro 2 video on YouTube. I hope we'll get to see you play it one of these days. Um, Cerebro 2 is something that I, I find... I find fun when metas are kind of uncertain. Um... And so it's it's just a consistently decent power push. And uh, so it's something that I go back to, like, especially if I want something that just is kind of... It's not going to have incredible high rolls, but it's going to consistently do decent. Um, I like Cerebro too. So maybe one of these days we'll be able to see it. I had an un unfortunate interaction where Iceman hit my 5 cost, She-Hulk, and it bounced her to 7. Yep, that can happen too. If She-Hulk has been reduced in cost and is not at that point in time 6... It can buff bumper up. I've had that happen. <clears throat> I've had that happen as well. It's very it's really unfortunate when it does. And then what happened to your YouTube streams? So there's some there's some strife with releasing a video and then launching a stream. Um it's just it it, it just um it it'll start promoting the live stream over the YouTube video. And so it's something that I'm still trying to fill out. If I'm doing long streams, so long streams I would much to do on Twitch. If I was doing like short streams so that they were really segmented, then I think the YouTube platform was fine. But for long form streams where maybe I release a video and then launch a stream right after, I feel like it's a lot easier to do or launch a stream on Twitch. And so ideally long term, I'm over here on Twitch, but we're, we're filling it out for now. So far, it's been the reception has been incredible. Um, I think the live stream community over here is definitely much bigger than uh, than over on than over on YouTube. YouTube, it's a lot of like that, my core audience already. So here we can kind of reach a, a different a different platform. This game is uh, awful. Ego did not did not help us at all. Yeah. We're going to give it to him. He, he double snapped with us. He played the Ego game. We're going to give it to him. Uh, we know that this is an automatic loss, but <laughs> he, that ego was so unfortunate for us. Um, and certain decks do favor uh, ego play a little bit better. So if you're playing a tempo deck, uh, a lot of times ego can can do pretty decently, and it's sometimes play lines are hard to mess up. Something like this, you can mess it up <laughs> pretty, pretty easily. Uh, ego did not treat us well today. He cut our he cut our cube losses down to what is that six? That's okay. Anyone new coming in, That's uh, that looks really bad, but... Do you have any Hawk decks in your channel uh, without Coulson? Uh, I I do. Um, I only played Hawk a couple of times, just because it, it was a little bit harder for the viewers to be able to build. And so it's... I try to make my builds as kind of accessible as possible. Um, so I did run a couple... There's actually a Sarah Tech deck that I know KM Best was messing around with that runs Hawk, um, that doesn't run Coulson. I can I can pull it up after this. I think it's a pretty decent one. I haven't tested it as in depth as I would something that I that I feature on the channel, um, but it is something that I, I think definitely has good bones. And in, with that, in that same breath, uh, anything that KM Best puts out is it probably has uh, probably has good bones already. So we don't have a really good, um, a really good rotate. Ooh, they do. The Electro Ramp deck into the Quantum Tunnel is pretty big, but it also lets us know exactly what kind of deck. If it's a Galactus or if it's a standard Ramp deck. And wow, that was not a great, was not a great flip. The Jubilee into the Lizard Pool. It, it thins their deck, so they have better chances of pulling into it later. But overall, not not fantastic. We're gonna push our Vulture over so we don't have to risk. Um, we don't have to risk flipping it. Um, we could all, we might accidentally flip into Black Bolt or Moon Knight. But with this move, we'll be able to do, if we draw into our Miles Morales, we can do that. We have the arrow to, to lean in on. Uh, we don't want, we don't want Moon Knight to trigger. I have not seen a Devil Dino good cards deck video by you yet. Uh, that is the type of deck that brought me to infinite. So I, I did a, I did a Dino build recently 
And so it's not a all in like greedy. It doesn't have mystique in it anywhere. So it's not like you're trying to lean all in on the devil dino portion. Um, it's and it's actually not my build. It's uh, Nina is noob. So I don't know if you watch the creator class, but um, it's something that that she built and runs a little bit more frequently than I do. And uh, I tested it out and it it runs it runs pretty well. I think anything with dino that has a solid base uh, it has it is incredibly consistent just because of how much value devil dino brings to the board. Horse Law, I once played Sandman, build the raft, and I could not play the free epic, the free card. Yeah, that's almost as bad as filling the left lane for the raft and getting Giganto out of it. Um, it's it's almost it's almost the exact same. You bought a hawk after saving tokens for about a month just to find out I needed Colson for the tier one deck. I don't think you necessarily need Colson. Um, I think Colson is a lot. Colson's a lot better than what I thought he was going to be. I thought he was going to be really really bad. But the ability to have that extra support or those cards that curve into uh, your four and five really well uh, has been absolutely in incredibly valuable. So we didn't we didn't discard any of their cards here. I think we lose this one. We can't play multiple cards. We need to pay. We need we need to pay a little bit more attention to the to the game. Um, we're gonna lose that one. I think we we pivot decks again. I can show you the KM Best version. It, it runs Hawk. It runs uh, Sarah. I haven't tried it since the Sandman change, <clears throat> but I think it does have really good like base. Uh, I think it has good foundational bones, so it makes good use of your Zabu. It leans into the fact that you want to like do a Shang Chi. You can maneuver their cards with Polaris and Arrow for the Galactus play lines, um, and then the Korg and Rock Slide. Even if you don't have the Hawk, are really good disrupt value. Uh, the video was close to what I played. Um, the one that, the one, the Dino one, yeah. Um, it's it's very consistent, so it's not flashy, but it puts a consistent amount of power on the board, and a lot of times that's that's what you need. Not necessarily in the the Thanos Lockjaw Shuri swarm of uh, of, of decks that we see. Um, they can just put so much power out so consistently that it is hard to to keep up with them. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's very I think it's very good. And then Beast, thank you so much for for the follow. Uh, cool K, Draco, thank you all so much for the follows, by the way. So I don't think we're going to play Armor here. Armor is really more exclusively used in this build whenever we're wanting to like stop a death, a death wave or something. Um, and so we want to be able to hit the Mind Stones with like a Killmonger, or if they play a big card, we want to be able to use a sh potential Shang-Chi. Uh, Beast, love the love your YouTube content. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you that you enjoy it. As a creator, that's honestly all that I could that's all that I could ask for or hope for. And the channel has grown so much bigger than what I could have ever imagined it would grow into. Um, it just I started it because I really enjoyed playing playing Snap, and I I figured it would be uh, something that other people would would get value out of seeing as well. And uh, it just kind of continued to grow and morph into this really big thing. Um, and so as a creator, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you enjoyed the content. We're going to play the rock slide that would disrupt any kind of draws that they that they do with like a lockjaw. We have the killmonger to take out their time stone. We don't have any of our card cost reduction cards. So like our Sarah or our Zabu, uh, but I'm not. OK, well. We should have seen the leech coming. Uh, a time stone on three into a turn four snap should have been an immediate immediate signal that it was a leech because that's what I do when I when I play the Thanos lockjaw deck that's unfortunate we can play a couple of cards into Nidalee into Nidalee or we might as well stick this turn out just to see if maybe we can top deck into something really really lucky um I think odds are we're not going to be able to to hold up to what they can do we would have to come into like a Shang-Chi left and be able to still hold down the right lane. I don't think that's I don't think that's going to be possible. <clears throat> the Sandman deck has <coughs> uh, bumped you up a few, few notches, but it's super tough to climb since the surfer season. Uh, and I think as we continue, people are getting fuller and fuller collections. So I think it's going to continue to get more and more competitive to climb to infinite. And so people get sometimes get bummed out that they aren't able to hit infinite. I I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get too 
uh, too down in the dumps about it. Uh, because as as more people get full collections, you're going to start seeing you know more and more cohesive decks more consistently. Um, and so it's going it, to, just as the game progresses and people get better, it's going to get harder to climb. Uh, Yasin, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, I hope that, I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you're having a fantastic day so far. Could Sandman work in a Hella deck? Uh, yeah, so someone, a, a mod on the official Marvel Snap Discord, uh, Nasir, he, he has piloted a, a Hello Casino style deck for, 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 for seasons. Um, it used to run leader. I don't know what he's changed in it since then. Um, but it runs Sandman, Killmonger, some more tech heavy cards so that if you discard them, that's fine. You can resummon them. You get that value. If you just end up playing them naturally, you get that value there as well. Um, I'm not sure exactly what he, what he's done with that since the leader nerf. But he he's piloted a, a Sandman and a Hella deck for a while. Leader is still good in Hella. I haven't I haven't tried it out. I think it'd be a little bit riskier, harder to to navigate, but I think it could be doable. Uh, and then hi there, I'm having fun with your Cerebro deck. That that's huge. Uh, which Cerebro deck or which version are you running? Are you running the Cerebro two? Uh, but I'm glad that you're enjoying it, by the way. Yeah, hell is fun. You can climb with it, but you have you have to be com you have to be patient. Um, if you're going to climb with Hella, it, it's it's a patience game because you're not going to be able to just steamroll every game. You have to be selective and wait for those key matchups uh, that that are in your favor. So the Wolverine could be Galactus. We have the arrow to try to counter it. If they just do, if they just do a wave, or if they try and do a turn five. Galactus, then we should be okay. I think we play our Killmonger here. We should be able to swing Nidavlir in our favor. They're going to send us an Electro, aren't they? No, they change it with Storm. Interesting. Not the kind of deck I thought they were running. Uh, so Sunspot, Wolverine, and Storm. I have no idea what they could be pushing. I think we need to do our hawk into middle. We can do usually I like to do the disruptions as early as possible, so the rock slide. But not knowing if we're gonna be able to win that lane or not, I think we need to push the higher potential or the ability to push more power in there later uh, with the rock slide before it locks down. Modoc, yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, but I haven't seen Storm in a in a Modoc build before. I mean, I guess it could be decent with uh, with locking in like a, a Dracula or a Morbius so that they, they can't be countered. I guess it's not incredibly uh, incredibly unheard of. I think we're going to do the, the rock slide just to add some disruption. We're playing into Nidavlir. Um, that's going to be our best value. Dexter did a Swarm Modoc deck. That may be its KM best list. So it's one of their lists. I haven't I haven't seen I haven't seen those. Um I it does make sense though. You can drop the Morbius or the or the Dracula there. Yep, it's the Modoc. It's the Modoc. Um So they discarded Swarm, Lady Sif, a Rock, and Cerebro. So they didn't have Apocalypse. I'm wondering if we pull all three over here, they would have to discard two more, two more cards here to overcome our power here. They could discard one more and it'd bump it up by one. But if they do the apocalypse instead, then we win the left and the right. I think the arrow will get it for us. I think hello would be good if you could lock out the lanes you don't want your cards in. Like leave one space in each for high power. That could be. Um, there, there may be some way to build it. Ooh, we've fallen in cubes so much. The longer we play, the worse we're getting. And so I'm curious if Dexter's uh, Storm, Modok, and KM Bests are are pretty similar. Um, like maybe with one or two key changes. <laughs> Sounds like me. Oh, man. 
that's okay. We're already at infinite, so we're just a lot of times we're just kind of testing different things out. Um, and I want to test out a few Absorbing Man builds. Now that he has been... It's a bug fix, technically, but it, he functions how he should with, with Wong and Kamartage and Odin. Um, I think there might be some interesting ways to build that, but you still run into the, the the potential that that arrow last turn can just devastate your, your game plan. Um, so I think it'd be a... I think there could be some interesting ways to build it, but I, I definitely want to experiment with some before I release anything or like test any on stream. Uh, get some one cost cards, maybe with an armor, uh, maybe a mystique too, a mystique to copy the armor. But then, then what happens if you don't draw into any of it, uh, into any of your big units? Um, I think I think it's tricky. So our Sarah got hit with the ice box. I don't think we play Zavu. I think we just play Rock Slide. The the value that it can add, the disruption, um, I think is going to be more beneficial than playing it slow and dropping the Zavu. Well, <laughs> never caught a not never caught a live one. Uh, Hawk Sauce, welcome. I'm so glad that you're able to jump in and join us. I hope that you're having a fantastic day so far, um, and I'm I'm glad to have you here. Yeah, it's still a a gambit. Yeah, yeah, and so it's very specific play line. So building it. Yeah. Better with Hazmat Luke for sure. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think with Hazmat and Luke, if you end up doing like a Wong and a Debris, you start clogging a lot of your side of the board um, and you could you could make a lot of value out of it. So I think that may be where I start is some kind of like toxic build. Um, I think those are just, I don't know. They, those seem really fun to play. Um, and so it'd be something I'd be interested in kind of testing out and playing around with. So the arrow there turned out to not be the right play. We could win the negative zone, but odds are if they do anything that generates cards, we lose Sokovia um, in four power. They have discarded their Mystique, though, from Sokovia, so they can't copy the Devil Dino. It's like our, our only <laughs> hint of hope. Yeah, it's still long, but it's fun. <clears throat> it could be. Um, ooh, so we lose all three. The stature into the... So the stature only got reduced in power because of Sokovia. What are the chances? Oh, and it was created by Agent Coulson. That's huge. That's such a good Coulson pool with Sokovia on the board. He's super strong with Hazmat Wong Valk. Uh, who, Absorbing Man? Yeah, Col Colson coming in absolutely clutch. Uh, we wouldn't have won that either way, but it's still so devastating to see <laughs> that that play line come down. Wow, what was that for? Was that for two? That better have been for two. And then Flu uh, Fulgore, thank you so much for the follow. Uh, I hope you're having a fantastic day so far. We're so glad to have you here. But we're not having much luck with that one. Speaking of Speaking of Modoc. I think this one runs this one runs decently as long as you're not getting hit with Sandman. Uh Sandman really tanks this one. Uh Luke? Yeah, Luke is Luke is good with Hazmat Wong and Valkyrie, but it just I don't know. It seems so inconsistent. Like when it works, it works really, really well, and there's really no stopping it. Uh but I always feel like I, like it doesn't work when I need it to. So the Sanctum Sanctorum, we switched off of any deck that can push power over there. Now we have something that needs it. Why do people snap on six from one to four cubes? I don't know. Um, like, Unless I'm bluffing, I usually don't. Um, just because there's no real incentive for, for that person to stay at that point. We don't have any of the cards that we want to get discarded. I mean, Apocalypse, but that's just one out of the many we have. Maybe we do. They have a Thanos list. Maybe we do run the the Moon Knight. It might hit our Apocalypse. It might tank our hand. It might just hit a player or a Swordmaster. The Modok. It's been it's been uh, to hit their dailies. They might to to win a game on to win a game with a snap. I would still like strategically. It would always be better to snap ahead of time.
we're having a day. I think we're going to skip here. We can play the two cost She-Hulk and the Morbius. Oh, the Moon Knight did not favor us today. Uh, Beast, Beast MTG, uh, got to run. Good luck. Uh, have a good evening, everyone. I hope that you have a fantastic evening. I'm so glad you were, you jumped in and joined us. Uh, hopefully, you have a fantastic rest of your day. So let's do, um, let's do. I guess Morbius to the right. We can do She Hulk. The Space Stone in like a Thanos build is going to be so powerful. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dad. I've been <laughs> I've been live for a while. I didn't intend to be live this long, uh, but we got a couple of really big... <laughs> I like these Twitch streams already. We got a couple of really big follows or uh, raids, and uh, it's just we we couldn't we couldn't end it. Uh, the the hype was a little bit too big, uh, and so it's something that I I pushed off a couple of things from from work, and so I'm glad that the video for tonight is already done because now I can just render it after I in, in stream and be fine. But I will have to end in probably about 20 minutes or so. My son gets out of school, um, and so I'll have to I'll have to run about then. But until then, I'm gonna I'm gonna push it as long as we can. That's why I don't like discard archetypes. Always gets the worst option. Uh, it doesn't. It just feels worse when it does. Um, and so it's it's one of those that it feels bad when it when it happens that way. But realistically, like you. Statistics and numbers are always going to come out. Um, and so like if it's the one out of five shot, it's going to be the one out of five that it pulls. It just feels really bad when it's that when it's that one and that's like the only one that it couldn't do. So they do have the space stone. They'll be able to move it into the Sanctum Sanctorum. We're going to we're going to run from this one as well. Can't find one that we're just resonating with. We could always switch over to the Thanos Lockjaw. I think that's one of the stronger. We have an arrow deck built. Um, but I feel like those are a little bit unfair. Like they're just so hard to counter. So we have the we have the Thanos. We have an arrow on arrow a Sauron arrow. Actually, while I'm, I guess for the rest of the stream, I have no. I don't have the. I have a greedier version of the stature deck that I want to try out. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do it. We're going to build it real quick. So it's uh, it's a little bit greedier in how it runs. It wants to double down on some of those big, powerful resources. Um, so it has the... So it still has Iron Fist. It still has Nightcrawler for the Miles Morales, because he's still another one if, if you have two of them and you trigger it. Um, it's still a lot of value that you can push out on the board. We have the Quinjet for the card cost reduction. We have the Titania for a good double down target armor to protect the the lanes we have moon knight as an enabler for our stature uh moon girl to give us better chances that it doesn't discard the card that we need to keep and to double up on our, our key resources we then have uh miles we keep arrow because she's just so strong right now we have our stature your stature uh black bolt and then she hulk and so depending on what we draw into, a lot of times we do want to skip. I've thought about doing or throwing a, a Sunspot in here somewhere, maybe in place of the Titania, um, just for some earlier play. But um, this is still like testing and tweaking it. But I think this one, I think this one's greedier than the value version I was running. But I think it might be fun if it, when it pulls off, I think it'd be fun. I want stature. Need stature and She Hulk for the ultimate death deck. How are you going to enable your stature on your on your death deck though, uh, Yasun? Because that sounds that sounds really enticing. Because because stature stays at one with wave, she has really good synergy with it. Would you just be running like a Moon Knight or a? You couldn't do Black Bolt because you would have to drop wave on on five, right? I'm curious. That sounds that sounds really really enticing. Would have to use like a Moon Knight and Swarm. Yeah, if you could get it to work, that'd be that'd be cool. Um, just because of the way that it interacts with uh, the wave the wave combo. 
Uh, gotta run. Love your streams and your play-by-play -play commentary is some of the best in the biz. Keep uh, keep streaming on Twitch. Uh, thank you so much. I'm glad you jumped in and joined us for a little bit. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope that we see you back uh, very, very soon. Uh, do you have any um, emoji slots open? Uh, we we do. Um, I need to... So with Twitch, we have to submit them, or I have to submit them for approval. Uh, just make sure <laughs> I don't upload anything kind of crazy. Uh, I have a couple right now. Um, but I think, I think we should be able to unlock a couple more. I just have to transfer them over and submit them for approval. So I, I think we're going to, I think we're going to play the Cerebro just to get it out of our hand. Um, just in case we get the, the moon girl to double down on the She-Hulk and the Miles. Cause then we could always move Nightcrawler on turn five into turn six. And we would have two Miles, two She-Hulks to play. We do get the Stature. The Debris does junk things up a little bit, though. I think this is going to be a game of Moon Knight into a turn 5 skip. <clears throat> so She-Hulk can be cheap. We could do Stature, She-Hulk, and then maybe something else. They do get the raft card. We discard our black bolts. We don't get. Oh. Why did they really wanted that the raft location? Um, they opted to not play their Shuri. Oh, Shuri didn't come from their deck, did it? It came from. Maybe it did. I don't know where else it would have came from. Uh, the debris came from the camp. Sure, he had to be in their deck. They chose not to run it. So we can skip here. We can do a big She-Hulk and Stature. Or maybe we do She-Hulk and Arrow on the last turn. No, the middle location is going to be too tough. So we could always do... We have initiative here. This would be a 12-point swing. So... With Titania on our side, we're at 10, they're at 14. We only need four power in this lane. So something like a Titania would swing that in our favor. Ooh, but we're going to lose the two power from Cerebro. So I think we do need to do Stature there. We can then do... I guess Miles and She-Hulk. We stack into maybe one lane. Oh, but we're going to lose a lot of the three power extra. That's okay. I think we might have an okay shot here. Uh, you said, how do we acquire collector's tokens after completing pool three? Was it 100 each time with a small chance of 400 or did they change that? So it's, um, we got very lucky that stature did not pull out of the middle location. I guess, yeah, yeah, we were able to pull it through. The orca with the debris just kind of shot them in the foot. They still won that lane. Uh, but we were able to hold down uh, the left. So it's still, it should average out to 400 for that small chance uh, once you complete pull three, but it's it ranges from 200 to 600 now. So whenever you get the 600, it feels really good. Uh, whenever you get the 200, it, it feels like you're getting gypped a little bit. Uh, but that's how, that's what they ended up changing it to. A uh, great thing about Moon Knight in a death deck is that you'll probably have Wolverine. I, I don't know that you could say Probably you might have Wolverine, but I I don't personally run Wolverine in my in my death deck all that often. <laughs> Titania is a free steal; it's hundred percent every time. I yeah two so two hundred is the lowest from that range. So where you would have gotten a pull three card, you still have the one you have you still have the slots that are one hundred tokens, but anywhere that you would have gotten a series three card is now between two and six hundred. Um, I believe is how it, I believe is how it was set up. So we do have Quinjet. If we get Moon Girl, we have some really big value in a potential She-Hulk and Stature. Um, we also have Iron Fist that we could use <coughs> to try to enable a, a Miles as well. Or the Nightcrawler. So if we get Miles, we have the easy enabler with our Nightcrawler. We have Kingpin that's going to be two cost. We're going to go ahead and throw it onto the board now. Um, we have Arrow that can kind of help support it potentially. He's pretty good for the discard decks. Yeah, I, I like Wolverine. I just, I don't typically run him. Uh, he, I don't know. I end up feeling like 
he's a little bit less value overall in like a standard death wave. Uh, but I, I think I think the buff was a good change in the right direction, though. So in a four cash bundle, we got tokens. So in a four cash bundle, we get tokens twice. Oh, so you got 400? Is that... I'm not... I'm not sure I'm following. Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm following. Hey. We have our armor and our Nightcrawler. I think we play both of those. We can protect the Nightcrawler from a Shang-Chi play, a potential Shang-Chi. Not Shang-Chi. Uh, Killmonger. And then we're still hoping for either our Miles, our Moon Girl, to double down on the cards we have. Going into turn five. That's great. Um, we don't have... We don't have a way to force them to discard a card, though. Oh. That would have been bad. We will have two She-Hulks to play. We could potentially draw into maybe a Titania. Maybe we draw into the Miles here as well. Um, for a pretty big last turn play. Once you're Series 3 complete, you could get tokens twice in every four caches. I think that checks out. It's been a long time since I looked that closely at the math, but it sounds it sounds about right. Yeah, one will be 100, and then the other will be between 2 and 600. That, sound, that sounds correct. So we... Hmm. We have Arrow. So one of our She-Hulks will be free. Um, we could do She-Hulk, Iron Fist, Arrow into the middle location. I think we go ahead and Iron Fist this turn, though. We can Iron Fist mid. That way, we still get the reduction on our She-Hulk, but it gives us room to potentially top deck into like a Titania or something a little bit better. Nice deck, but could use more Morph. Every deck could use a little bit more Morph, for sure. <laughs> the, the other two options are Currency, Golden Credits, or Cosmetics. So they ran a Shuri. We do top deck into Titania. They go first. They're not going to be able to arrow our cards anywhere. We could do... Something like that. I think that gives us a really good push in the right lane. Really good in the left. And then if they play anywhere else but mid, we're going to yank it over and be able to, uh, to overcome it. <coughs> they do play in mid. Okay, so the Red Skull in mid is big. Uh, but we are going to yank their zero out. And so our 10 power should be able to overcome their sunspot and uh, their power in the right lane. Oh my gosh, I forgot about the Iron Fist I played. That could have stabbed us in the back. Oh man. Had we needed to win the middle location, that could have been really bad. Victory. Variants are, are in the cosmetics one too. Yeah, I think they're a lower chance, but they're in the like the same cash as your avatars and your titles. I think I'm finally getting close to being almost done with <laughs> with titles. I think I've just about unlocked all the titles you can potentially get. So we've been either really lucky or really unlucky, depending on how you look at it, because all of those could have been variants, which is which would have been which would have been a little bit more preferred. Uh, the token Tuesday bundles. That sounds like a good deal. I I think it's. So from what I've heard, I haven't looked at the actual bundles, uh, but I've heard that it's going to be a really good, uh, like, cheaper value that you're going to be able to buy. Um, so I, I th it sounds like it's going to be a, a good thing or a win-win for um, for the game and for being able to buy tokens, uh, but I haven't, I, I don't know exactly what it looks like yet. So once you unlock all titles and avatars, it's all variants. Uh, the, the luck, I don't know. I'm getting into, <laughs> I'm getting into things... Uh, that that I do not know for sure. I think so. Um, I think there are over 300 titles though. Is there really? I have almost I'm, I have almost 200 titles. So if there's over 300, I'm nowhere near it. Um, I, I, there are a lot of titles. There are, are a lot of avatars. I think it's just the copium telling myself that eventually I will get um, eventually I'll get variants instead of those two. We get the Quinjet value on the Moon Knight we could use to i mean we could try to use it to enable a a stature
But I think instead we're gonna play Iron Fist. We're gonna play Nightcrawler and Iron Fist. We can Moon Girl next turn. That'll double down on She Hulk. Um, depending on what else we draw into. We're not gonna. Iron Fist won't trigger now. And so I guess that's not terrible. We do get Miles Morales that we're able to double down on, which is pretty big. We're going to be able to fill up just about the rest of the space between the five power multiple miles that we have and the She-Hulks. So we'll double down this turn. We'll skip next turn. We can move our Nightcrawler out. An arrow might hurt us quite a bit, uh, but otherwise I think we're in a pretty good spot. Have they said if new cards will be getting avatars as well? Uh, not that I've heard. Um... I haven't I haven't heard them say one way or another rather. Um I know that they've talked about looking at different systems to continue to release cards, but I but I don't know what that looks like as well. I know that they're continuing to listen to feedback and try to uh make the systems that they have a little bit better. So hopefully they find something that that feels good all around. The the Professor X lock there is tough. So we lose initiative off of that, yeah. Oof. So now they could do... Couldn't do a Destroyer. That'd only be 15. I guess Destroyer here would bring it up to 25, right? This would bring us down to 9. Unless we did... I guess let's order that differently. Let's do the She-Hulk first. We'll do the arrow there last. And I forgot to move the Nightcrawler last turn to make our miles free or our miles cheaper. Yeah, I should have moved the Nightcrawler in turn five. Um, I I overlooked it. I'm trying your your Hawk deck. Uh, you were playing earlier so far. Two games, pretty good. And it's not mine. That one is. Uh, all KM best. Uh, I just happened to see it in a stream whenever I was whenever I was watching uh, him stream one evening. So it's definitely his creation, not mine. But I do think it is very sound. The only thing we can hope for is that they play a destroyer here and they don't play another card. I think we lose, but let's let's uh, let's send it anyways. They do play oh, the arrow or the zero. We're not gonna be able to outpower it. <laughs> we can win mid really easily. But the right lane just becomes impossible. Blizzard and the Maximus. No, we can't. We can't do it. Even if we had moved our Nightcrawler on turn five, in this particular game, it wouldn't have helped. Most games it would have. This one it wouldn't have. We climb up, <laughs> we climb up a little bit, then we climb down a lot a bit. Um, is this the? We've played him like two out of the last three games, right? <laughs> the lizard definitely got silenced. There was, there was absolutely no chance that he was uh, making any noise whatsoever. <laughs> hmm. I was gonna play the Quinjet. But I think we wait. Um, just in case Sakar pulls into our Moon Knight, I don't want it I I don't want it to discard our She-Hulk. I really don't want it to pull into Moon Knight, but we'll see. And that is exactly what it pulls into. Okay, so we lose our armor, which is okay. They lose their uh they lose their killmonger. So I think I think in terms of trade-off, it's it's fine. Uh, how do you feel about Moon Knight with Stature? Seems most people trying her only use uh, Black Bolt to trigger. So if we're leaning on Stature and getting that value, I feel like we need two triggers. Um, just one trigger feels really, really like gimmicky. Um, and I don't think it's ever going to be consistent enough that you can rely on Black Bolt every single game. And sometimes Black Bolt's not going to be your ideal play on turn five. Maybe you'd rather do a three cost and a two cost. Um, so I like both just for the consistency driver, but it can feel bad whenever whenever uh, Moon Knight discards the card that you actually need. Uh, and th thank you so much for the follows, guys. Uh, I will be streaming here over the next couple of weeks. Um, I have a lot of videos on YouTube, but we're going to be streaming here. So if you enjoy the stream, uh, make sure that you drop a follow so that, uh, that you can be notified whenever we go live. So they have the Daredevil, the Shang-Chi... 
the Sentinel. I don't remember what they were playing. I feel like we played them before, but I have no idea what they were playing. We can have a really explosive turn five or turn six here. I think we skip at least one turn, depending on what it looks like they're running. Do they ever Professor X lock? Because if they do, and we don't play into Sinister London, then we definitely lose out. I feel like we need to at least play She-Hulk. The others are guaranteed to stay at one. Uh, we could do the double She-Hulk and then see what we pull in the last turn. His hand is bricked. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he has a lot of Sentinels coming back his way, right? He can't draw anymore. I just found out there's a State Farm Twitch channel. Is there really, Fish Guy? <laughs> the more you know, I I had no idea. Um, do they? It, what do they? What do they stream? Do they have any videos on demand? Could this be Cerebro Three with a Daredevil tech? Uh, it could be um, with the Killmonger and Shang Chi, or it could just be like a. I don't know what this is. Um, I don't know what it is anymore. They they could leech there. That was that was very true. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I don't I don't know what they're running. Um we go first, so I I think we uh, Oh wait, it's the Sandman. Oh my gosh, what was I? Well. So If we move our Nightcrawler here we can guarantee that this goes here. As long as R7 power is better than what they do, then we should win the two out of the three. We're just controlling where stature goes. Man, we should have we should have dropped our stature last turn. I was not anticipating the Sandman play. A Doctor Doom? Could have been a Doctor Doom. Luckily for us, it was just a Magneto? Not luckily for us, we lost... <laughs> Oh no, we lost by one. Uh, Tensive, TLSG is still on, let's go. I am for just a little bit longer. Um, my son's bus should be here in just a minute, so I'll have, I'll have to go, but I don't want to end on something like that. Uh, so yeah, Sandman is common. He got, it, I don't know that it's a straight buff, because there's some archetypes that he doesn't fit in anymore, um, but some that are just brand new that he does really well in. So I don't know. I, I think in general he's he's in a decent spot. Um, I think only time will tell how prevalent he is. Uh, st stupid buses. I think only time will tell how prevalent he is in the meta overall. Yeah, we, we need the one more game. His bus should be here any minute. Uh, but I just we, we want to end on a good note. Uh, we want this this stream has been incredibly positive. Uh, we had a couple of really big raids, a lot of followers, uh, phenomenal amount of followers, a few new subs. Just a great supportive overall stream. Um, and so I want to end it on a good note. Moon Knight always tempts me. Like I always want to play Moon Knight. It's usually not the right play because we have Moon, we have Black Bolt in our hand. But if we go with the She-Hulk, then we wouldn't want to play it. We have Nightcrawler, so we could do Stature and Spider-Man. It's not the right call, but we're gonna do it. Two hours later, <laughs> two hours later is, is for sure the, the path that we go down. That's a fair trade off. Oh, we, they lose their wasp, which is not great. They could be doing a lockjaw rotation. That's actually Crimson Cosmos is actually tough because um, now if we reduce the cost of our our miles it can only be played here. So maybe something like a moon girl here. Have you tried Regis's version of this deck? Uh, he's he shuries the the black bolt with the biggest uh, that's the biggest difference probably I haven't um, I I try and not run shuri whenever possible um, I, I think shuri is great it has really good targets it has the arrow it has the black bolt um, or the she hulk um, I think it would be really sound but um, I try to not run shuri whenever I can just because it's so common. I think we, I think we're gonna Moon Girl here. We can play a Miles Morales next turn. 
I'm at 48 right now. Um, any tips to get to 60? Or was it Kawa's version? I don't know, fish guy. There's there's so many uh, that that jump on it, and so I don't know. There's no there's no telling. Yeah, Shuri Shuri's really really strong. So I feel like it's one of those that you can throw her into like just about any deck and it be fine. And so instead of uh, instead of I don't know, this is a tough one. Um, I think the left lane is a loss because of how much power they can push there. We need to push into these two. We'll see. We're going to push our miles into the middle location. We already have two cards here, so they'll have to. Okay, so the vision is big. They can they can maneuver that around the board where they need to. We can move our Nightcrawler and then 775 out all we can do. That might be enough to overcome their power in the middle. Probably not, but I'm hoping that I'm, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to end it on on this one. Win or lose, we're going to end it on this one. Uh, okay, so the Doctor Doom is... Oh, the Doctor Doom is big. We should have moved our... Had we moved Nightcrawler over into the right, could we have won this one? We would have lost mid by... Seven? No. No, we only tied the left lane. Okay. Well, that's not a good one to end on, but we do need to... We do need to end it. Uh, we are going to we have a couple of things we need to wrap up before um, before my son gets home. But this has been uh, a phenomenal stream. Thank you guys so much for all of the support, all of the follows, um, all of just the chat. It has been phenomenal. Um, I think if we keep going like this, the transition from YouTube over to Twitch will be very, very seamless. So thank you guys again for for being here. I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I will be live. I, I mean, I'm shooting for tomorrow again to do another another live stream maybe not four hours long but i do want to do another one tomorrow so make sure that you are following if you enjoy the stream uh check out the youtube channel if you if this is the first time you're seeing me and uh we will see you guys later as always this has been tlsg bye guys <laughs>